Hello everyone, welcome to What If Issei Got Betrayed and Join the White Dragon Empress Part 4. Before we start please go support Abraham Josu Salas Roa for writing that awesome fanfic, now let's begin. This is the translated version I made, there will be some wrong he or she calling here because it's translated so let me clear this Issei is a male in this story. Chapter 11 Get Up, the situation in the underworld was not the most optimal. It had already been two days since dot those monsters appeared. Those monsters were not just any beings, they were beings that were born from the Longinus. Annihilation Maker. One of the most powerful and destructive due to the ability it grants to create monsters with the ability to kill a god and end the world as it is currently known. At first glance, it looks like these things are destroying everything in their path. Forests, small cities. Their goal seems to be the city of Lilith, the capital. There have been civilian casualties, but not at a high rate due to the government's quick action. The government is trying to keep the population calm and safe, but asking that when a humanoid monster of more than 200 meters is destroying everything in its path. Don't ask for the impossible. The largest monster was called. Jaburwiki, the other 12 that are smaller so to speak were called. Bandersnitches. Named by Azazel based on the literary text written by Lewis Carroll. The Bandersnitches are currently trying to keep themselves at bay, the attack forces of the underworld are confronting them and managing to hold them off long enough for the rest to devise a plan. Something that will help them get out of this horrible situation that undoubtedly threatens the entire territory of the demons. And perhaps, it will not stop there if said task is achieved. Right now, the underworld was the first and most important line of defense, if it falls. It will be the end. There is no doubt that the cow's brigade will take advantage of the situation to attack whoever they can. Especially the hero faction who will see this as a unique opportunity. I still can't believe that. All this is happening. Serzich's had his hands on his head with his elbows resting on the meeting table of his castle. This was a disaster, more because of the horrible news that Azazel told him about his say than that of the Bandersnitches and the Jaburwiki. I know Serzich's. Something told me that everything went to hell weeks ago when he disappeared, but this only made things worse. Azazel covered his face with his hand, he was frustrated by the previous thing. Even so. I think we should be aware of the situation. Serzich has settled into his seat, and his gaze was now severe as a light layer of red ore enveloped him. And as Azazel understood it, he was upset and sad about Issei's death. Dot, we must act despite everything. We've been there for two days without much result. I agree with what you say Serzich is, but it will still take some time to create an offensive capable enough to put an end to those things Michael, who was projected by a magic circle, knew that the only way to end all this is. Dot. We have to finish off the Jaburwiki, if that thing is still whole, there will be no way to stop this attack. Azazel gave his opinion, more because he knows that that thing is the generator of smaller monsters. They must all be eliminated if they truly wish to survive. The three leaders knew that this was the correct plan of action. That's how it should be. But. For some reason they didn't feel up to anything. How are your guests? Ad. Azazel answered Michael's question, who closed his eyes. Penemu, and the others are watching them and Grigori. But they are bad. Especially Valerie, Kuroka, Lefay and Tiamat from what Arthur reported. I'm very surprised by that coming from Valerie Lucifer. I know, it shows that Issei also became someone important to them as he was to the Alliance and the Gremory group. He was the pillar, the heart of both groups. Azazel agreed with Serzich's opinion, in fact, he is also surprised by that. He never imagined that Valerie would want to help someone, especially his rival. Although the price of that help for the boy to regain his former confidence was high. Breaking away from his friends and family and having a new beginning. All that went well for Issei to recover with the help of Valerie, something that turned out positively as the weeks went by. But in the end, the situation and what they planned to do to office forced them all to confront Cao Cao and the hero faction. Which went wrong because they got what they wanted, and when they thought they couldn't get enough, Shalba Beelzebub appeared who was still alive thanks to the hero faction and created those creatures using Leonardo. In addition to being the cause of Issei's death, there was no doubt about that last one. You can see that Valerie Lucifer's team was like the Gremory group. They were like a family, a family of exiles, but they got along as one and had affection for each other. And Issei Kun's arrival changed them, but his death. It must be the first time they lost someone so close and who became important to them. Now that Issei Kun is gone. Serzich's knew one thing. Valerie's team is fragmented, destroyed. That showed how something that was believed to be so strong and united can be broken. And he knows that. If this news gets out through all media, not just the entire alliance. Also the Gremory group. Everyone will be destroyed and will lose the will to fight. That showed how important Issei was to everyone. I know. Valerie never wanted to drag Issei into his problems, he was the one who decided. Valerie knew of the problems he would have for having taken Issei, but still he decided to face them just like Issei. Dot. What were you able to find out Azazel? 
but the little I analyzed Ascalon, I could see and feel Samuel's aura in her. That proves that. Issei was a victim of the curse of Samuel, and that was what led him to this. Issei may have been very strong and resistant, but he lacked enough magical power to keep that curse at bay and prevent him from mate. Azazel responded to Michael's question with clear sorrow in his voice. Even if he had remained a demon, he also lacked enough demon power to survive. So in both cases it was inevitable if this had happened differently, at least that's my theory. As for what happened to Ascalon. It's not something I can explain with confidence. The blade of the sword turned ash gray, as if it had turned to stone or fossilized, while the rest of it had dull colors. It's as if Ascalon had lost its shine and its power. But you can still feel its dragon slayer aura from the sword, only now much more gloomy than before, as if Samuel's poison interacting with a dragon slayer weapon that would have strengthened. Whatever the case, one thing is certain, Ascalon is now useless even if it has that gloomy aura. And I don't know if his current state is temporary like he's evolving, or if he's deteriorating over time. Comparing a dragon slayer weapon like Ascalon to Samuel's poison would be like comparing a nuclear explosion to a stick of dynamite explosion. With that, there is a chance that perhaps it is deteriorating to destruction. Anyway, that's all I know. I can't confirm anything more. Geez. I wouldn't want to imagine that last one being what happens to Ascalon. That sword would be the only memory that could be recovered from Isais and both leaders had to agree with Michael, because now. That sword can no longer fight either. I wouldn't like to do this to others, but. Others don't need more bad news than they already have. It is necessary that the young people also fight, and when everything is over. We will tell them everything. Serzich's and Michael had to agree to Azazel's suggestion. If the information of Isais's death is leaked to anyone, especially his side superiors, many will lose the will to fight. It sounds very selfish to keep this, but it was necessary for the others to fight, the main leader's hands were now tied, literally. There was nothing else they could do. Everything had gone to hell weeks ago with the disappearance of the Sekar Yuite, but now. Everything, and literally everything, had gone to hell in a matter of hours since a couple of days ago, and right under their noses. Maybe the major forces of the underworld can keep those monsters at bay for a while, but. There's only one thing left. It was asking for help from the factions they have support with and hoping for the best. Let's let the rest take care of. This. The main thing now is to go after the person responsible for everything. Serzich's was more serious than usual and it was no wonder. Everyone knew who the mastermind behind this attack was and he was surely going to stay in his place watching everything. Well, they will pay him a visit. A very clear visit. So. He died, huh. Cow Cow was watching in the distance the destruction caused by the monster created by Leonardo's sacred gear. Incredible. And to think that he would die in the hands of Shalba, even though he no longer had the power of the supreme class or Mayu, and that he was not yet fully recovered. Apparently. Shalba had a deal with Hades and got some of that. That must be what ended the Sekiruite's life. Georg said that very calmly, although he knew deep down. It was Cao Cao who wanted to put an end to the Sekiruite. It doesn't matter anymore. It's a shame, but he's dead. Nothing will change that. Only Valerie remains. Maybe that's enough. Cow Cow watched as one of the monsters devastated a small village. Georg continues analyzing, perhaps at a given moment, we will have to participate if the situation warrants it, or if at least one of those things reaches the capital. Hades must be more than desperate if he asks for an acceleration of the plan. What's more, it seems that he cares little who he makes an ally with, if by doing so, he manages to eliminate the demons from the face of the earth. The clear hatred that the Greek god has towards demons and fallen angels was no surprise. But it's surprising that he managed to keep it hidden or in control for so long. Cow Cow and Georg continued contemplating what was happening, waiting for the right moment to attack. In another part of the underworld. Precisely where the Grigori headquarters was located, the area and territory of the fallen angels. The atmosphere was a bit heavy. And it was no wonder, since certain sad girls created that heavy atmosphere. Arthur would arrive at one of the rooms in the area where they were in Grigori, the place where Valerie lived. The girl had locked herself in her old room in Grigori, which apparently has not changed since she left. And there is no doubt that she and the others have cried all the time since the day it was confirmed that it was impossible may say survive Samuel's power. Valerie. Arthur knocked on the door of the room where his leader was. And as I sense, he did not receive any response. Valerie. We must talk. Oh way please. Arthur couldn't help but feel sorry for himself when he heard her voice. Dull and lifeless. He sighed when he saw that he would gain nothing other than rejection from his leader. He turned around so he could go to the local room. He walked down a hallway, turning a couple of corners to reach the supposed room, only to hear the sobbing of several. Kuroka hugged Le Fay, who was crying. In silence while the Nekamata remained calm, but there was no longer any shine in her eyes. First time that both were vulnerable. Hurt. 
Tiamat was just sitting in a chair with her arms resting on a table while crying in her own way and looking at the ground without much to do. It was incredible to think that someone like her could also behave like that, but still. It was painful see how they were. Without a doubt the atmosphere is worse than I thought. Arthur would see how Biku entered the place while he was saying that, being accompanied by Fenner. I know, even so. Tell me, did you call him? Obviously. Biku answered Arthur's question while he breaks into a bit of a cold sweat. I called him since yesterday, so he will come today. Maybe in a few hours. But still, the problem would be if she accepts the help and confronts Cow Cow again. I know, and the way Valerie is. She seems to have lost the desire to want to do something, and she's not the only one. Arthur said, giving a slight glance at the other girls who weren't paying attention to them, especially to her sister that although she is asleep, the traces of tears in her eyes were proof that she did not stop crying. I never thought that when Haidu Kun died, this would happen. I know. Although we didn't know him at all and we didn't interact much, I admit that I liked him. Biku spoke with a half smile. I think so too, it shows that he was much more than we previously believed. Arthur said that while he sighs and adjusts his glasses. Still, Azizel thinks it is necessary for Valerie to fight again, at least one last time. So I call the right people to talk to her. Who would they be? It's a pleasure to meet you for the first time. Arthur and Bhikkhu upon hearing that unknown voice looked in a certain direction where someone entered the room of the place. He was a young Japanese man with black hair, accompanied by a dog with black fur and red eyes. And instantly, more people entered the place following the black-haired man. One was a very beautiful blonde girl with blue eyes with a hat and a magician's outfit and an enviable body. The other was a girl with brown hair tied in a ponytail, and the last was a young man with brown hair with a delinquent face and a white cat riding on his shoulder. You must be slash dog, right? The young black-haired man nodded to Arthur's question. It's also nice to meet you I'm Arthur Pendergon. The pleasure is mine, Arthur San. And please call me Tobio, Tobio IQs. The black-haired man accepted the handshake with the blonde and then went on to see those accompanying him. They are part of Grigori's secret agents. I see. The pleasure, my name is Lavinia Rinai. The blonde magician introduced herself with a slight bow and then made a somewhat sad face. How is Virginia Chan? It's wrong, or rather. No, better see it yourselves. I understand, let's go. Tobio understood Arthur's words and then went to where Valerie was, being followed by his companions. Arthur and Bhikkhu decided to follow them too, they knew that they were getting involved in someone else's business, in which they could not say that they understood how their leader feels, but they are also part of this. It didn't take them two minutes to reach Valerie's room. Valerie, I'm going in. Tobio, receiving no response, entered the room, followed by the others. And upon entering, they noticed that there was not much light in the room. Afterwards, everyone found Valerie sitting on her bed with her head down and her hair covered her eyes, giving her a gloomy expression. Valerie. Upon hearing that voice, the girl turned to look at her visitors, who, upon seeing Valerie's expression, were left speechless. Valerie had red eyes swollen from crying, traces of tears on her cheeks, and she had an expressionless face, totally emotionless. And next to him, on the nightstand, was Issei's sword, Ascalon, still in its state from last time. Hobio, uh. Valerie would then visualize the other people in the place along with Arthur and Biku. Lavinia. Natsum. Kauki. Why did they come? We received a call from Azazel to come. Tobio spoke first and took a couple of steps forward. Valerie, I know it's too much for you. But in this situation, it's important that you fight again. Leave me alone. There is no point anymore. What's the point of fighting if he is no longer there? Valerie's heartless words surprised everyone, especially Arthur and Bhikkhu. Valerie had truly lost the will to want to continue fighting. Virginia Chan. Lavinia spoke sadly when she saw the state of her little sister, she had never seen her like this. Even when Valerie was a child, she was never in such a state. Sure, she didn't show much emotion and was somewhat expressionless, but this was different. As if she had lost his sense of life, again. Valerie. Did you love him? Tobio's question left everyone speechless, even Valerie, who was the only one who could answer said question. Valerie would look at the ground for a few seconds before speaking again. At first it wasn't like that, or I didn't want to accept it. Before I saw him as an inferior being, a useless person who didn't deserve to be the Seker Yuite, but. I had envy him for certain things. He had everything that I lost years ago, and also what I couldn't have. The love of a father, a mother, for which he fought apart from his friends. I always believed that we were very different, that he only exists to be happy with those he loves just as others love him. And that I only existed to not have any of that. But that idea changed when I invited him to my team that day. He showed me that we were not as different as he believed, that we could both suffer and be hurt by those we care about, whether directly or indirectly. The memory of that day when Issei told him about his trauma would pass through Valerie's mind. He was just like me in certain ways. 
He also let his past traumas and mistakes govern him for a long time until he was finally able to overcome it. By feeling identified with him and being able to get to know him from another perspective, a feeling that I had never felt before was born. One that made me want to be with him, to be there for him at all times, to listen to him and hug him, but. I refused to think that an idiot like him interested me. And I denied it the entire time he was with us. But he even fought for me to be okay. And now that he's gone, I realized what he means to me. Valerie would blurt out a sob when saying that dot since he joined us, I changed without noticing it. And it hurts me, never having had the courage or to be able to tell him. I love you. Valerie. Natsu Minagawa spoke sadly, his little sister in everything but blood had never been this honest with his feelings. That showed the great change she had thanks to Haidu say. Anyway, leave me alone. Coughed. Valerie coughed a little and blood came out of his mouth, alarming everyone. I don't want to keep fighting, not anymore. That only ended up taking away more of what I had already lost years ago. That's what it will be like. Would you sit there doing nothing, without a concern for the world that is in danger? The same world that Haidu is safe fraught for. Hitobio spoke with a disappointing tone in his voice, surprising his classmates who had never heard him speak like that. I never thought you were a coward, Valerie, I thought you were better than that. Valerie, upon hearing that, just looked at his brother with anger and pain, apparently, he didn't like those words at all. More because he was calling her a coward. Shut your mouth, you don't know anything neither you nor anyone else knows what it's like to know that the person who was everything to you is no longer here, they don't even know or know a say as he really is, I can't live without him anymore, I can't go on without him. He, he became everything to me. Valerie's scream, full of pain and tears, seemed to silence everyone. Natsume and Kaki only felt sorry for Valerie and looked away, they couldn't say they understood how he felt. They had their families and from time to time they go to see them, so they have no right to speak. Arthur and Bhikkhu knew that they also had no right to speak or to say that they understood how Valerie felt. They also still have their families, they are separated from them, but they are still alive and they truly hope one day to be able to remedy having been separated from them. However, what ended up disconcerting Valerie was seeing. How silent tears came from Lavinia's eyes and that Tobio had his eyes covered by his hair, having a gloomy expression while clenching his fist to contain his apparent anger. Valerie never expected to see them both react like this. Not in front of her or anyone else. So you think. Don't we know what it feels like to lose someone important to you? Don't we know what it's like to know that person is no longer here? So you think then you don't know anything about us? Tobio's scream seemed this time to frighten Valerie, who opened his eyes in surprise. He had never seen Tobio angry. I lost my parents and couldn't remember them until I reached a certain age. After them, I lost my grandmother, the only family member I had left. So don't say that no one here understands you. Tobio. Virginia Chan. The aforementioned went to see Lavinia who let out a sob before speaking again. I also know what it feels like to lose someone important. I lost my parents too. No one took me in after that and only my guardian was the only one who did. You're not the only one who has lost a lot since she was little, but that's what brought us all together. Dot. Lavinia began to cry without further ado as she felt the tears coming out of her eyes with more force. Lavinia. I. Valerie, you were only right about one thing. The girl went to see Tobio who was a little calmer. Dot. We don't know and we don't know anything about what Haidu Issei really was like. But he is the first and only man you have ever loved in your life. And that's why it bothers me to see you like this. Defeated and without desire to do anything. Because in that way, you are spitting on the memory of the only man you loved. Although we did not know him, nor have we interacted with him. If we know that from what Azazel told us, Haidu Issei would not have given up, even after everything. He would have fought. Because you already knew what he was like. And I'm sure he wouldn't want his friends to stop. Fight alone because he is no longer here. He would want them to continue fighting, even without him. Tobio would then turn around, and the others understood that it was time to leave, they have work to do. Dot. I will accompany Azazel to the Kingdom of the Dead of Hades in a few hours, will the others go to the capital to help in any way they can? What will you do, Valerie? Tobio being followed by Lavinia, Natsu and Kauki left the room, with Arthur and Bhikkhu being the last to leave and closing the door behind them. Leaving Valerie, alone with her thoughts. The girl took a look at the room. Issei's sword and remembered his face, and everything he always did, even at the cost of his own life. Valerie clenched his fists as he digested everything his brothers had told him. They. Already outside the room, with everyone now in the living room. Thanks for coming. Someone had to cheer Valerie up. Don't worry, it's the duty of an older brother to be there for his sister. Tobio exchanged a handshake with Arthur before leaving with the others. Good luck. Thank you. With the help of the others, they will be able to put an end to some of those things. Tobio said goodbye, leaving at the end of the place along with his group. Time to save the underworld. Arthur would then see his sister still in Karaka's arms, crying as she tried to sleep. The lack of sleep was too much. 
Seeing the blonde's look, the Nekamata understood what he wanted to do, so she stepped aside while leaving Le Fay, so that Arthur could sit next to her, and that she I cried in his arms. Le Fay, don't cry anymore. Arthur caressed the head of his sister who was still crying even with that. Sob dot say sama, the. This is too much for me. My light and my idol. I know. Arthur laid his sister down to sleep, she needs it even if she wants to keep crying. Time would pass and it was currently 11.40 pm. In that elapsed time, Valerie finally left his room and when he rejoined the others, he gave the other girls encouragement to get up and prepare to fight. That is say would not like to see them like this and that it would be an insult to his memory to have given up and not protect the world that he defended at the cost of his own life, without asking for anything in return, that he only did it because it was the right thing to do. Correct. Dot. Those words seemed to restore some spirit to Kuroka, Le Fay and Tiamat. Yes, what Valerie told them is true. The best thing they can do now is fight for the world he protected, a way to show how important he became to all of them. When everyone regained their composure, the person they were waiting for arrived at the place an hour after the previous. Valerie was currently lying on the couch in the living room, with her entire group next to her. Furthermore, the presence of all of them gave a certain calm to the young woman who was truly hating the treatment she was suffering. The curse in itself was painful, but to have it removed from her body through the means that this person is applying, it was horrible. More because she had to throw the curse out of her mouth as if she were going to vomit, that in itself was disgusting. Her son Wukong was aware of how difficult it is to deal with curses of this kind. Putting his hand on the silver-haired girl's body, making the curse go to the stomach, and then making it go to the throat, so that at the end it goes to the mouth. It was horrible. Valerie finally vomited the curse in a kind of black mass that emanated negative energy in a jar that the first one had in his hand, who quickly covered said object and put a seal on it. This thing was going to stay in place. The yaokai smiled as he saw his work finished, with Valerie sitting down receiving help from Kuroka and Le Fay. There, I got rid of almost all the curse. The little that remains will be eliminated by your body in a few hours. So you'll be fine. Valerie nodded to Sun Wukong's words. Dot, to think that Biku would call me to help the hacker Yuaku. Shut your mouth old man. So Valerie will be healed. The first would hit his descendant with his cane on the head ow. I appreciate the help first, with this I can return to the battlefield with my head held high. Valerie had the intention of looking for Cao Cao and making him pay the ultimate humiliation. Ha, eh, just don't try too hard girl. Sun Wukong would point to her friends and. Dot you don't want to make your friends cry too. Valerie blushed with shame when he heard this. In truth, that is not his goal, especially because he really does not want others to also suffer if she dies. Issei's death has affected everyone in different ways. First, I do not wish to be inopportune. But is it possible for someone to survive that curse without receiving treatment? Arthur's words took everyone out of the picture. Sun Wukong is a Dai Yaokai, someone who has already touched divinity. A master of both Sinjutsu and Yujutsu. Having touched the curse he must have an idea of how dangerous it is. The Yaokai scratched his chin for a few seconds before responding. It is impossible to save the body if it is not treated quickly, or there is a way to have the curse in one place. This curse is so dense that the body will die first, then the soul. A soul without a body is very vulnerable. This would be quickly devoured until there is nothing left. A fate worse than death itself, unable to go to eternal rest. Now, you tell me. As far as I know, only the brat's dragon slayer sword was the only thing that came back, right? And said sword had interaction with Samuel's poison, which left it in its current state, right? But that's right. According to what we heard from Azazel, the sword was altered by the poison in some way. He said that perhaps he is evolving, since his dragon slayer aura became more intense and gloomy than before, as if the poison had enhanced it. But from his current state, it also seems like he is deteriorating and could end up destroying himself. Alone at any time. The Fei answered Sun Wukong's question, who scratched his chin for a few seconds. Am I allowed to see and examine it on my own? Okay. Valerie accepted the first request and would take out Issei's Ascalon sword and put it on the table there. The first went to see the sword and its condition while using Senjutsu to analyze it. Hmm. Unfortunately I don't have an answer for this. But from what I know, the sword was inside the boy's sacred gear, which was linked to his soul. And if he really died, the sword must have gone with the sacred gear if it passed to another host or been destroyed. Because being inside the sacred gear, the sword is also linked to the boy's soul. So I wouldn't be surprised if the sword was affected a little by Samuel's poison while the body was destroyed, but, but. I asked him at now. Because of what Azazel told me in his report. Before Ascalon ended up in his current state, he had noticed that the blade of it had a small drop of the boy's blood infected by Samuel's poison, which caused Ascalon to end up in such a state. So I have to think that maybe the boy had the sword outside of the sacred gear, and when he died, his poison infected blood fell on the blade of the sword. 
Anyway, that doesn't give an answer or a question as to whether the boy is alive or not. Sun's words made Valerie and the others become a little depressed, there was really no hope for a sad return. I'm sorry if I wasn't much help in knowing if the boy is okay. Don't apologize, first Sun Wukong. Valerie sighed deeply as he wiped away a tear that he wanted to come out. Although I still can't digest it, I have decided that I will continue fighting and stop Cow Cow. I will protect the world that Issei protected with his life, and that I will not let him down. Heh, <laughs> that's good to hear, young lady. But anyway, the best thing you can do for now is wait until you are in optimal condition. Tomorrow is a new day, which should be the final day of this whole situation. For now I must return to Yulong. Sakura wants him to do something. The situation itself, he doesn't care. It's none of his business, if Cao Cao is doing this it's on his own with some help from Hades, and that's actually worrying on some level. Why does he say it first? Albion was finally able to speak, he was already tired of being silent, since not even he could improve Valerie's previous state. Hades is not a hypocrite, he does what he does and boasts about it. But he's not stupid, he knows that without proof. There's nothing we can do against him. That in itself was worrying. And everyone knew it. They only have to survive the current situation for now. We only have to fight, I can't stay here without doing anything. Valerie stood up. I am the current hacker Yuku, there is no way I will stay here doing nothing. Well said our fearless leader Biku gave the girl a pat on her back while she looked at him with annoyance. We are here to help you Valerie Naya. After all, I'm going to go around with this team until the end. Kuroka put her hand on the shoulder of the girl who smiled gratefully at her. Me too, we've been through a lot together. This group is. My family. Lefei gave her support to the situation, while Fenrir just slowly nodded his head. Arthur smiled as he saw how everyone here really supported him. I have no attachment to the cow's brigade. I get along better with Valerie and everyone here than with Cow Cow. What's more, it's fun to be with them. Valerie was surprised to hear this. I don't expect them. He smiled a little when he felt that feeling of camaraderie and friendship that the group had, he felt happy. Thank you. Everyone. Valerie gave a sincere thank you to the people who are his friends and comrades. Me, I will also fight alongside you. I'll make those brats pay for a say. Tiamat crossed her arms as she said that. Uh, although I am not familiar with you, I like you. But when this is all over as it should, I think I will follow my own course. I no longer see the point in pursuing Drake. Okay, Tiamat. Valerie spoke and then extended her hand to the dragon, who saw her surprise. Let's fight and avenge Issei, so that he may rest in peace. Eh, uh, okay. Tiamat accepted Valerie's handshake, which was more of an oath between dragons. He, the two heavenly dragons of this era are very interesting. Red attracts people and white attracts those who are exiled. Both are opposites and similar. Both seek to be at the top in a different way. Yes, it's an interesting generation. But anyway, if you're going to fight, I suggest you also use the only memory that the Sekiruite brat left for you. He would have wanted it that way. Everyone would see how then the first did something like a spell with Sinjutsu and Yujutsu, well he did something to the sword. And then. When he finished, the sword would shine and cracks would appear on the ash-colored blade, which when it broke. The blade of the Ascalon sword was seen with a small change. The blade of the sword gained a reddish tone, while the handle now had slight red details. D, that's. It is the improvement that the sword underwent. Sun Wukong said as he left the sword lying on the table. Dot as he analyzed it, I realized that although its dragon slayer presence was immense, there was a possibility that it would destroy itself if it was used to fight when it was in that state. Meaning that the sword was evolving, it was a slow process that could have taken maybe another couple of days. So using my arts I accelerated the process and made it perfect, it shows that the interaction between a common dragon slayer with a part of the supreme dragon slayer, made this event. But anyway, use it in memory of the boy. We will. Valerie agreed determinedly, at least she will carry the last memory of his say that he left. Good luck. With that said, the first turned around, so he could finally leave. All while Valerie sat down again on the couch and looked at all of his colleagues before saying. Listen everyone, Azazel plans to go with Serzich's Lucifer to Hades' hell to visit him in a few hours. So I want you guys to pay him a little visit from me too. That bag of bones won't be involved in this. The realm of the dead is located in the lowest strata of the underworld, and this is the place where the souls of the dead arrive. And Azazel along with Serzich's were visiting this place, plus they were escorted by another person from Michael who could not go with them. Azazel knows that it must currently be about 3 am in human world time, so everyone must still be acting late. There is no rest if those monsters don't stop their pace. Anyway, this hell that is controlled by the Greek god of death, Hades. It is not as big as the underworld, and this world of the dead is a wasteland in which no creature could live. An ancient Greek temple appeared when they walked to the end. That is the place where the grim reapers of this world live, and it is also the castle of Hades, the sanctuary of Hades. 
when the two leaders set foot in that place together with their companion, the moment they entered. The Grim Reapers gathered and were glaring at them with hostility. They had gone to that place without any warning, so for them, this must be like an attack. The place where the two leaders and their escort arrived was a place similar to a ritual area. Ornaments like gold could be seen inside, and they are so beautiful that this place does not fit to be in the underworld. There is also a carving on the wall of the trinity of the gods of Olympus. Zeus, Poseidon and Hades. Where the carving of the latter stands out notably. Then, from the depths of the sanctuary, Hades would appear, the skeleton god who was wearing the same clothes that priests wear and approached his visitors. As he approached, he brought several grim reapers with him. Yes he has an unpleasant aura around him. Seeing Hades, Serzich's beside Azazel took a step forward. It's been a while. I am the current Mao Lucifer of the underworld, Serzich is at his service. The redeed greeted politely with a stern expression. You can tell he was angry with the god in front of him, but he must keep the image. God of the kingdom of the dead, Hades Sama. I'm very sorry for showing up unexpectedly. Hades laughed at that dot that you all came here. Fafafafafa. Of course, he did not expect this. The Greek god spoke with a tone of assurance. His strength was a threat to both leaders and they knew it. Hades then looked at the person behind both of them, Dot and who is that fake angel over there? I can feel an abnormal presence from him. The one behind Serzich's and Azazel was a young man wearing a priest's robe, he had blonde hair and green eyes. And from his back, ten pure white wings were spread the young man introduced himself in a simple manner. Hello, my name is Dulio Jesueldo, I am a brave saint, the joker of Michael Sama. I'm here as a bodyguard for Mao Lucifer and Governor Azazel, although it doesn't seem like they need it. But Michael Sama said that just in case, it's an angel's job, my job. Ho, oh, the angel who is also known as the heaven's trump card, huh. I heard that the longiness within you can freely control the world's time. Fafafafafa. That Michael, I never expected him to send his joker here. Hades sounded amused in his tone. The leader of the bats, the leader of the crows and two longiness. Don't you think that bringing people like that to an old man like me is a somewhat exaggerated form of intimidation? Azazel had a twitch in his eyebrow when he heard Hades' amused tone, although he already sensed that that skeleton would notice Tobio who is outside the temple waiting for them. I don't think it's bad to talk to all of you while we drink tea. But I'm going to ask you. What business do you have here with me? Hades, although he pretended to be innocent, he already knew or sensed why. Azazel seriously wonders how much he has to irritate them to satisfy himself. Serzich's would then respond normally. A few days ago there was an incident in the underworld that took place in Lucifer's city. From what I know, the team of the current hacker Yuaku, Valerie Lucifer together with the Chaos Karma Dragon Tiamat and the Seker Yuate, Haidu Isei Kun, received an attack from the Cow's Brigade in said city of the underworld. Ah, that. I have received a report about it. And also that Valerie Lucifer with his group, Tiamat and Haidu Isei Kun, were attacked by the fates. I heard that the descendant of Lucifer was secretly plotting something with Office Ouroboros, so I had to investigate it. Since all the factions are thinking about having an alliance, the relationship between the entire factions would collapse if there is betrayal of others just like that. Although it does not surprise me that there are always traitors who oppose their happy alliance and end up joining terrorists, I had to send my subordinates to investigate the current hacker Yuku's group, since I heard rumors about a new alignment to her group. So when they informed me that the Welsh dragon was with them and that he was no longer a demon. I told them to give him a little warning if he betrays his people. Hades explains as he expresses words of respect from time to time in his speech. Fafafafa. I admit that when I heard that the Welsh dragon was with a vanishing dragon group, I laughed like never before. Fafafafafa. I always imagined any traitor on the side of the terrorists, but the Welsh dragon joining them. Fafafafafa. Don't expect that one. What might have prompted you to join them? Did an internal problem occur in their alliance, and that caused the Welsh dragon to leave them and make them believe that he was dead? Was it you who provoked him or did something to him that you shouldn't have, or was it the Welsh dragon's former mistress who did something she shouldn't have? Hades's funny words made both leaders feel bad and angry. And they could not refute what Hades said, because it was true. This was their fault, Issei's friends that he left, and they didn't know anything about him until now. Even if they didn't have that intention, they both knew that the damage was already done, they can't change anything. Still, even if the Welsh dragon betrayed you, it shows that you still have good esteem for him and are sorry for his loss. Heh, well I'm sorry for your loss. I can grant you basically anything except my life. Dot listening to Hades, Serzich's uneasily nods his head once. Is that so? I see. I also came because I heard a rumor that doesn't sound very good regarding what was said. Serzich's decided that it was better to get to the main point. Hades Sama, I have received a report that you are connected to the cow's brigade behind the shadows. I heard that you are helping the hero faction and the old mass faction. 
I have also heard that they used SAML, if this is true, then their action would be a serious betrayal. Even if we ruled in different positions, all factions agreed not to have to leave. I don't want to question your innocence, but just to confirm. Can I verify the status of SAML's seal? Hades seemed to sigh at Serzich's question. That's idiotic. I'm busy, I don't have time to be accused of those things. Azazel, upon hearing his words, got fed up and tried to go after him before he fled, but. Serzich's hand stopped him from walking. I understand. Then I'm going to stop asking you questions. But the truth is that he is accused of such acts, so let's do one thing. So, I would like him to stay with us until the netherworld monster incidents are resolved. Hades seemed interested and stopped before taking a single step. You just said something interesting, kid. Yeah. What about this, then? I don't mind accepting that suggestion if you show me your true form. Azazel was speechless upon hearing those words. I've heard rumors about you. The reason why the demon called Serzich's became the being called Lucifer. The reason you have surpassed the demons. Serzich's nods his head. Very well, if with that I can make him stay here, then that is a very easy thing. But I suggest those around him to back away, because they will definitely die. Who? That would be interesting, those around me are not only high level soul reapers, there are also supreme class soul reapers within them. Still, I don't believe your words are lies. The fates next to Hades showed more hostility towards the words of Serzich's, who took off his shirt and indicated to Azazel and Dulio to step back. Serzich's increased his demonic powers, and instantly, the power of destruction was emitted from his body. And his body began to turn red. Then, the entire sanctuary began to shake due to the power of Serzich's. This shows that the sanctuary that is apparently very solid is shrieking. Violent cracks appear everywhere within the sacred precinct, including on the ceiling, walls, and floor. From this place, not only the sanctuary, but the entire area was shaking because of Serzich's power. Suddenly, an intense crimson aura coming from Serzich's covers the entire area. As the shaking stopped, the shrine fell into a sharp silence. What appeared in the center was the power of destruction in human form. In this form, the power of destruction spreads without needing to receive my orders. Without any field barrier, it would make everything come to nothing. It was fortunate that this sanctuary was very resistant, it seems that this place will last longer. Serzich's voice was the same, but with a slightly sinister tone. Azazel seeing him like that made his skin crawl, he was a monster. Azazel had a reminder about a talk he had with Ziodicus a long time ago about Serzich's. Ziodicus wondered if it was correct to classify Serzich's as a demon, since he was a type of mutated demon. The reason why it was like this is unknown. Is it because of something in Ziodicus's blood, or is it a special characteristic of the Bale clan? It is not known about it. Azazel now understood what Ziodicus meant. He understands that Serzich's was an ace in the battle against the ex-demon king's government. If someone like him, who has unreal demonic power were present, the sides of the battle would be overturned. There are only two demons with unreal powers, Serzich's and Ajuka. Although there are no more demons like them that can be called super demons. Even though it was hidden somewhere, if it comes to light, then it will be very dangerous. Ha ha ha. It seems like they don't need an escort. Behind Azazel, Dulio was laughing sarcastically. Yes, it would be natural for him to feel that way. Does this satisfy you, His Excellency Hades of him? Hades laughs out loud upon hearing Serzich's words. Fafa fafa fafa. You are a monster. I see, you have greatly surpassed the former Lucifer. You can even surpass most in the Mayu category. No, I can feel a strange power, which even makes me hesitate to call you demon. What are you? That's what I would like to know, although it is true that I am a sudden mutation. Either way, my state could remove it. Hafa fafa. It doesn't sound like a joke at all. If we fight, then the kingdom of the dead will undoubtedly perish. At that, a soul reaper approached Hades and whispered something to him. The skeleton god points towards the fire located in the ritual area. A vision appeared in the fire. What appeared in the vision was the attack of a certain group against a very large army of fates. Pray, 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 how much can you endure against me, reapers of souls? Biku was seen who was spinning his Ryuji bang, and at his side was the gigantic golem, Gogmagog, who sent an army of grim reapers with their giant arms. It is also seen how Kuroka and Lafay launched magical attacks, Arthur brandished his holy sword Caliburn and eliminated hundreds of fates. Even Fenrir was on the spot and at high speed eliminated the soul reapers as if it were nothing. Azazel smiled when he saw them there fighting, those brats really like to get on someone's nerves. It was obvious that Valerie had something to do with it. Is this the work of the governor of the crows? Hades asked very unpleasantly. Azazel chuckled at his reaction, that was what he wanted to see. He couldn't contain himself and answers her while he smiled. Huh? No idea. The aura around Hades changed color as a result of his anger. You won't be able to defeat Valerie's team members unless you send all the fates. 
You may have to stay here and ask those around you for help. Yes, that's why you just have to stay here. Serzich has said afterward he would lift one of his fingers up. One more thing. This is just my personal opinion, that's why I'll allow myself to tell you. The personification of the power of destruction looked at the god of the realm of the dead, with sharp eyes. God of the kingdom of the dead, Hades. The evil intentions directed towards Haidu is say Kun demand his life. I will be ready when the fighting ends. I will eliminate this world and I will not stop or hesitate. Hades had made a mistake, that mistake was making Serzich's angry, since he had participated in Issei's death indirectly. No, there were actually two mistakes. Azazel created a spear of light and pointed it at Hades. Great skeleton god, don't forget that I am also angry. So I will allow myself to tell you this clearly. I will not forgive you for what happened to me. Student who was almost like another son to me. And I won't forgive you for making my daughter cry either. Hades did not change his presence despite receiving hostility from both leaders. Although with that they managed to get Hades to stay, now everything depends on the young demons. And also, on Valerie managing to defeat Cao Cao no matter what. Chapter 12 The truth is discovered. Another new day, which could be the definitive one for this entire pandemic that threatened the underworld and its inhabitants. The strength of the Bandanaches was not something they could underestimate, because the supreme class demons seemed unable to do anything. They were like ants trying to knock down an elephant, even with the help of Emperor Belial and his servants, there was no great change, they regenerated at an abysmal speed and even. It seemed that they were not alive, since they did not show any type of emotion or similar. It wasn't until, according to sudden reports, in one of the underworld cities, a small group of only three people, who were undoubtedly humans, arrived and helped fight one of the Bandersniches. The blonde who was a magician, Lavinia Rinai, used her magic to hurt that thing, while a huge doll with four arms and six eyes next to her, froze the monster, and turned part of the field where they fought into a world of ice. The other two humans, Natsum Minagawa and Kauki Samajima, summoned their independent sacred gears that took the form of certain monstrous creatures and helped eliminate the smaller monsters created by the Bandersniches. That was in a way good news, and more so because they were sent by Azazel, which relieved some because of the help. Another sudden report that reached everyone's ears as time went by is that journalists from the Underworld News reported with joy that another of the Bandersniches was finally receiving critical damage from the Alliance warriors. Several hours it has been since Ajuka Beelzebub developed the method to kill the monsters, and the battles are beginning to turn in favor of the Alliance. But even so, the anti-monsters that were created were still difficult to defeat. But Ajuka Beelzebub and his servants created technical problems in their magic circles that worked against the monsters and gave them to the people of the Alliance who were fighting on the first front. Ajuka had created said techniques when the first monster first appeared in the underworld. All this while the Mau Falbium Asmodeus was in charge of the battle strategies. Thanks to two of the mass who used the intellect of him, all the Bandersniches have now stagnated and are receiving. Meanwhile, in another of the cities of the underworld. This is about the gigantic monsters against Levi Tansir of Leviathan appeared in said city of the underworld and froze a large part of the field along with the Bandersniches so that the others could harm and destroy it. The Mayu Leviathan couldn't just sit back while the underworld was in crisis, so she abandoned his territory to start a fight against one of the Bandersniches on her behalf. But that wasn't the only thing that was happening. Well, in another part of the underworld. Former Dragon King Tannen and his dragon servants ended up cornering one of the Bandersniches. Now they are attacking him with fire techniques, there are not many people who can withstand his fire breath, which is said to be on the same level as the power of a Mau. Mother please don't give up in another part of the underworld, a giant nine-tailed fox fired a flare at one of the Bandersniches. It was Yusaka in her Kaiubi form, and the one on her back was the little priestess, Kunu, who was telling her mother where to attack, while she covered her with her own fire attacks. Dot. Queen and Princess battled the Bandersniches, while a large group of Yaokai fought the smaller monsters. It was certainly good that the Kyoto Yaokai faction came to help during the demon crisis. The media would also be informed that the old mass faction of the Cow's Brigade was rampaging through the city, but they are being forced back. Ah, finally one of the Bandersniches stopped in a reporting helicopter that was recording everything that happened in a certain city in the underworld, a reporter spoke with joy. Since, the first group that managed to stop one of the Bandersniches was the Alliance army led by Emperor Belial. The humanoid Bandersniches was lying on the ground defeated. Most of his massive body is destroyed, and it seems as if he is no longer able to move. Everyone who fought against said defeated Bandersniches shouted in victory. In this advantageous situation, it seems that all the Bandersniches will be defeated by noon. But the real problem is. The remaining problem would be the Jaburwiki, who is heading here, to the main capital in the Mau territory. Roswis gave her opinion on the situation while she and everyone else from the Gremory group with Arena watched a large screen on certain place in the Lilith capital. 
The Gremory group had been fighting in the capital of Lilith since yesterday, helping with some evacuations, destroying some of the small monsters created by the Bandersnitches that arrived earlier in the capital, and lastly, finishing off or arresting some of the old mass groups in the place causing chaos, as well as some high-class demon servants who defected. I know, in fact, a few hours ago I received a report from Grafia on Asama that she and my brother's servants would take care of the Jaburwiki, one way or another. Riaz gave the information she received while sighing and yawn, at least they got some sleep. But the truth is that. Almost everyone was not in the mood for anything, but in this situation, the underworld needs them more than. Although. I hope Issei Senpai is okay. Gasper spoke pleadingly since, since the day this all started, she has had a horrible feeling like the others. They felt that maybe, something happened to Issei. But they had to leave that aside, this was also very important. Don't worry, Gasper Kun. Kiba gave the Dampiro a little pat to encourage him. You have to trust. Even if Issei Kun was kidnapped, he is surely still alive. And if so, I'm sure that one way or another, he's found out about what's going on here and must be fighting over there, or he's still trying to get here, or. Kiba decided to stop his words before drawing bad conclusions. Who is he kidding? He is also worried about Issei's whereabouts and is unsure if she will come or not. But anyway, whatever the result, they must keep fighting until it's all over, that's all they can do. The girls were also the same as Kiba. Something told them that it was better to leave aside what is happening in the underworld and take advantage of the situation in which, perhaps, a large part of the cow's brigade is here taking advantage of the chaos created and look for Issei and then return. But that would be ridiculous and selfish, they knew that Issei would not tolerate them leaving the underworld unprotected just to look for him. Something told them that despite the misunderstanding that day, Issei was unable to leave the underworld and the alliance to his fate. Especially when the news shows images of some children who said they were not afraid of those monsters. That they were sure that their hero, the op Eye Dragon, will come to save them and put an end to this. Which made the Gremory happy and sad, something told them that sooner or later they might know something they didn't like. Dot. Leaving that aside, everyone paid attention to the large television screen that showed how the Jaburwiki was getting closer and closer to the capital Lilith, but. Suddenly, the Lucifer group led by Grafia and the others arrived on the battlefield. Serzich's servants are taking care of the Jaburwiki. The Lucifer group is known as the strongest among all the demons. Right now they are fighting very evenly, and although they are not causing any critical damage to the Jaburwiki, they were still successful in stopping him. The Lucifer group was having a much more striking fight than Seraphol, and they are stopping the Jaburwiki while changing the landscape around them. Grafia's demonic powers are more overwhelming than many imagined, and her great destructive power is annihilating the earth itself. But the Jaburwiki is the monster that cannot even be defeated by the Lucifer group led by Grafia. Many even wondered from day one of all this. Who or what created that thing and how much hatred was necessary to create that thing? Monster. Question that was answered by Governor Azazel who informed that those things were created by the Longinus Annihilation Maker. That this chaos was caused by the hero faction and the old mass, just that, they did not report more. But still, thanks to the Lucifer group, the evacuation of the city is almost complete. Even the Citri clan demons were sent at the same time as the Gremory to confirm if there is anyone who has been left behind. All this while Sereard Bale leading his group is fighting against the old mass demons who were destroying the main capital. It was in that. Ruayayayar. The Gremory group, upon hearing that great roar, try to find the source of said roar and where it came from, then. Over there Kaneko pointed in a certain direction. When they looked, they saw a huge black dragon with a snake's body and tentacles, enveloped in black flames. Everyone knew who it was. It was Saji something was happening in the place where he was. Everyone decided to fly through the sky after seeing that. As minutes passed, they arrived at the place where they saw Saji transformed into Dragon King. There are many tall buildings and they were in the middle of the street. This place was surrounded by the black flames where the buildings and streets were destroyed. They could see that the capital has turned into a sea of fire in the air. It's fortunate that they don't feel any presence in the surroundings. No cars are moving on the streets and no one is walking. It seems that the evacuation of this place is mostly finished. Bremery group upon hearing a familiar voice, they turned around and saw the girls of the Citri clan protecting a bus that has lost one of its wheels, there were many children inside the bus. What is the situation? Riaz asked the tower of the Citri group, Yura. While we were traveling along this road, we encountered the hero faction, and they started attacking us when they found out that we are the Citri group. The bus received a minor attack, so it stopped its movement and we were forced to fight. And Kaichu, Vice Kaichu and Jen Chan are. Yura said with a tearful voice, then. Look at that Ross was pointed to the right. And then, everyone saw a street where there are many shops, and Saji who was grabbed by the neck by the big guy from the hero faction, Heracles. Saji's body is covered in blood, and it seems that he is about to lose consciousness. Dot. 
they could also see Sona and Tsubaki who were fighting Jean. And finally, they could see Siegfried who had in front of him a defeated Tomo kneeling on the ground in front of the human. Ericles would throw Saji aside after finding him boring, and Siegfried kicked Tomo, sending her next to Saji. And lastly, Sona and Tsubaki were just panting regretfully in front of Jean. Ah what is this? We expected a little more from the Arisitri and her servants, but they don't even serve to warm up. Is that all? Siegfried spoke with mockery in her tone, driving more than one person's nerves. Do not say foolishness, you only targeted the bus full of children Kaichu, Meguri and Saji, couldn't give it their all because they were protecting them, Tsubaki shouted at them angrily as she cried, her expression was mixed with anger and frustration. Hiba and the others, upon hearing that, could only come to one conclusion. They attacked Sona, Saji and Tama with such cowardly attacks. Just knowing that filled more than one person with anger upon learning of such a cowardly act. If Issei heard that, he would go beat those morons without hesitation at all. Jean sighed after taking some distance from Tsubaki who was protecting Sona. I told him he shouldn't, you know. But. I also keep in mind that I shouldn't stop Heracles at all Jean the moment she said that, without hesitation, she launched herself at Tsubaki and Sona with her holy swords, but. Someone would stand in front of her and would block his attack. Can you stop now? Kiba said that with a low and serious voice. Jean was just surprised at first, but then she smiled. Ara, but they are the Gremory group. Until they decided to come. Jean after saying that quickly took the distance from her by jumping back. Well, well, this certainly makes things a little more interesting. Siegfried spread his arms as he said that while he laughed. Obviously the demon saw him with anger, he takes them very lightly. Hump. If we continue to get involved even with the Gremory group, we could fall before them if we let our guard down. Another voice. The one who appeared from the fog was Georg. Dodd. I'm sorry for being late. Vritra's black flames were denser than she thought, so it took a while to dissipate it into another dimension. Just like the legend says, he undoubtedly had a skill with a strong curse and great gripping ability. Ah even though you are still inexperienced, you defeated one of the king dragons as expected from a long Inus possessor like you, Georg Heracles praised him. One by one they keep appearing, that was what the young people from the Gremory and Citri groups thought, thinking that more would arrive. But when they saw that it wasn't like that, they calmed down a little, although that surprised them. But because Leonardo, the possessor of the Annihilation Maker, was not with them. Could it be that he has a different mission? That was the only thing they could think of. But that doesn't change things, they started all this, and they don't doubt that it was that boy who created the monsters, so they must defeat them. Are you okay? Asia approached Sona, Saji and Tamo, and began to heal them. Her green aura enveloped them and healed them. Yes. Don't worry, but. One of the children was clinging to a dragon op eye figure. Yes. I let the children get hurt. I will never be able to look at Haidu again. Face again. Saji spoke barely conscious while shedding tears of regret. Saji Kun. You endured that for a long time. I'm sure Issei Kun would be happy if he heard what you did. Kiba congratulated him with a proud smile. Sona, Tsubaki. We will take care of them while you take care of the evacuation of the bus. Rhea spoke, taking a couple of steps forward along with his entourage, facing the hero faction. Dot. Rhea's. Don't worry about us, Sona. We are going to make them pay for what they did, we have inherited their feelings and Saji Kun's. Rias looked at Sona with a confident smile, which indicated that he I would trust them. I understand, Rias. We leave it to you. I accept Sona who stood up as best he could and sighed with relief, he no longer had so much pain in his body. Saji, Tsubaki. Let's put the spare on the bus and get the kids out of here. Hi. The aforementioned accepted as did the rest of his entourage who set off to prepare the bus. Anyway, since now it's our turn. Zenovia took a few steps forward, while she tightly grips her ex Durandal. I have some debts, to pay with you Siegfried. The aforementioned smiled defiantly, it sounded interesting. I'm sorry Zenovia, but I want to be the one to fight him. I will use my ace up my sleeve if necessary to take advantage. Kiba took a few steps and put his holy demonic sword in front of the blue-haired girl, blocking her path. You, Kiba. You're boring. Zenovia made a kind of displeased pout. Well, then I'll help Irina with Jean D'Arc. Yeah I'm going to have my revenge for Kyoto you're no good, even if you're the one who inherited the soul of a saint, Irina sounded somewhere between excited and annoyed, as she creates a sort of light in her hand. He, that makes it more interesting. Jean took a combat pose and in her hand created a sacred sword with a very thin but equally resistant blade. If the shape of that sword had to be defined, it is like a combination of any sword with a rapier. First of all, tell me something. Kiba spoke before starting the fight. Why did they attack the bus? No, actually. Why are they in the most important capital? I'll answer the second question. Georg said adjusting his glasses. Dot, it's for tourism. Kao Kao said that he wanted to see with his own eyes to what extent the gigantic monsters were advancing. And answering your first question. 
we were just lucky enough to meet the bus. When we saw that the Citri group recognized our faces, we couldn't avoid the fight. Although they didn't attack us, we started it first. It's also because I shook it a little, okay? Heracle smiled provocatively. We met Vritra by chance. Only the monster invasions were missing. So I said, fight me if you don't want the kids involved. This is how the fight began. Upon hearing, all the young people became almost extremely upset. Did they start a fight with such a silly reason like that? And that Saji protected the children with his body until he left him half dead. They don't forgive them for that. It was in that. I heard that the hero faction was having a meeting with the heroes who are trying to fight the abnormals. Everyone upon hearing that voice, turns to a certain direction and sees a tall and muscular black-haired man. Accompanied by apparently a young man with orange hair with a mask on his face. Dot, but it seems there was no trash between them. Sarah Ergria said loudly and happy to see his cousin in the place. Yes, I have come. Sarayarg said just that sentence while he was somewhat close to the Gremory group, while the Citri looked at him with surprise, they did not expect his arrival, but it was good that he came. I just finished defeating the remnants of the old mass faction that were going on a rampage in the city. It was then that I saw a black dragon in the distance. I had to assume that it was Saji Jenshiru, since I received information that he could transform into that. The heir of the house of Baal, huh? Heracles spoke with apparent mockery as he has a confident laugh. Dot, I have heard of you, the talentless heir who was born without the power of destruction, which is the trait of House Bale. I heard that you can even only fight with your body even though you are a demon. Hahaha, <laughs> it's the first time I've heard this about a demon, something unreasonable. So you are the one who inherited the soul of the hero Heracles, huh? Yes, that's Bale San. Ah, it seems that I was wrong, someone as weak as you cannot be a hero. Sarayarg spoke with a disappointing tone as he slowly approached. Do you think so? Heracles said with an outrageous tone and with a frown. Dot, I only know that you only fight with your body and that you do not have any demonic power. In other words, you are a defective useless demon. What can you achieve with only martial arts? Heh, don't underestimate me. Because it will cost you dearly. Sarayarg still sounded calm, this was nothing although no one could say that it was safe to let him fight. Hump. Heracles, I suggest you not trust yourself. You already know very well that appearances and even rumors can be deceptive. Sarah Erdbeil may look weak for not having demonic power, but still don't get complacent. Remember how you ended up in your fight against the Sekar Yuite, and he didn't have great magical power, and he still defeated you. Aorg's sudden words caught the attention of all the young demons and made them widen their eyes in shock. Had Issei already fought them? If so, where is he? That was what they were asking, but they decided to let their talk continue before speaking. Although the girls were shaking with nerves, even though they are going to fight, they can't help but want to know where Issei is. Dch. Anyway, I'll keep it in mind. Heracles put himself on guard as he cracks his fists. So, should we begin? Siegfried spoke amusedly as he pulled out two of his swords, the main one being Graham, but. What did they mean that Issei Kun had already fought Heracles and defeated him? What happened and where is she? Kiba asked the sudden question that everyone wanted to ask, she couldn't fight her anxiety of knowing where her friend is. Hey, I see you don't know, right? Jean spoke with fun and malice in her voice, which gave many people chills. They felt like they were going to maybe hear something they didn't want to hear. Ha ha We shouldn't be surprised that they don't know. Maybe his leaders do know, but they probably decided not to tell them so as not to give them more bad news. Siegfried sounded amused while he laughed and covered his face with one hand. Ha ah, it's true. What leaders they have, always keeping secrets until the last moment or never telling them anything so that they continue fighting for them. Ha 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 ha. There is no doubt that they are only fighting in vain, since his pillar is no longer there. The mocking words of Heracles who was holding his stomach with one hand while he laughed, seemed to finally get everyone on edge. Dot. You guys, shut up already Rhea's raised her voice as a layer of crimson aura enveloped her, we will not tolerate you insulting our leaders, and what do they mean by that, and where is a say? Ha, hey, what do they say? We say. I think she's fine. Maybe later they will use this news as motivation to put up more of a fight. Georg seemed to accept Siegfried's suggestion as he smiled, they already want to see his face. Dot. It would be interesting if the deceased Sekar Yute saw all the chaos caused in the underworld, but it's a shame he will never be able to see it, nor stop it. Those words, from Georg, seemed to have baffled everyone who was left speechless. Did you hear correctly? Did they say dot the deceased Sekar Yute? Even the children who were helped by the Sitri clan couldn't help but overhear the conversation. The deceased dot Sekar Yute. Kiba was the only one who could speak as he shook slightly and broke out in a cold sweat, he didn't like this. That's how it is. But so you understand, we will tell you from the beginning. Georg sat on the roof of a car, while his hand rested on his chin. Weeks ago we heard the news of the missing Sekar Yuite who disappeared overnight without a trace, and that the entire alliance began to desperately search for him. 
when we heard this news, we thought, like cow cow, that some group of cows brigade had something to do with this event. However, it was not. No one in the cows brigade was responsible for the disappearance of the Seker Yute. Those words from the magician left everyone bewildered without exception. Did the cows brigade have nothing to do with Issei's disappearance? But if that's the case. That's when Georg continued talking. When we found out about that, we decided not to give the matter any further thought. Even if the Seker Yuite disappeared because of a mysterious group or died, it didn't matter. We had one less obstacle in our plans. That's why the entire cows brigade decided to take advantage of that situation. And now, moving on to another matter that is a bit related to the Seker Yuite as well as this whole situation that the underworld is going through. Upon hearing that, everyone decided to pay attention, although they had a bad feeling. They felt that what they would hear would not be good, not at all good. We, the hero faction, have decided that the main leader of the cow's brigade was no longer needed, and the entire organization agreed. Everyone upon hearing the main leader's part could only come to one conclusion. Obviously Georg read everyone's expressions well. I see you get it. That's right, I'm talking about office. We decided that she was no longer useful to us, so we decided to get rid of her, but not before doing her some things. Everyone was surprised to hear that. They, who work for Office who is the leader of the organization, decided to betray her. However, Valerie Lucifer and his team got into our plans, and they tried to take Office to prevent us from doing what we were going to do to her. I know that some of you must be thinking now that it is crazy that we, we, mere humans so weak, have attacked the strongest being in all of existence. But you should know that Office has no fascination with fighting. She will only fight and defend herself against the Great Red, that's why she didn't do anything against us when we attacked her. Aorg would sigh and clean his glasses with a handkerchief in order to continue telling. In short, when we were finally able to ambush Valerie and his group along with Office here in the underworld in the city of Lucifer, we got an incredible surprise since Valerie had a new addition to the team of the. In fact, rumors have spread throughout the Cow's Brigade that Valerie Lucifer got a new member on his team. Those words surprised everyone again, but still. What did that have to do with Issei? It was at that that Georg raised his finger and continued. And the real surprise is that, that new member in Valerie's team. It was nothing more and nothing less than their beloved missing Seker Yuite. Everyone upon hearing the quickly entered a state of pure shock. And no, do not take my words as a joke or a lie. Because it's true. I was there together with Cow Cow, and we saw it with our own eyes. The Seker Yuite, Haidu Issei, was aligned to the team of his rival, Valerie Lucifer. Even after hearing those words, everyone was still in a state of pure shock. They still hadn't digested the words Georg said. Issei. Blind with. Valerie Lucifer. Zenovia, Asia and Arena said that while they were still not digesting that news properly. And no. It can't be possible. My Issei doesn't know. Well, that's how it is, Gremory Eris. Georg interrupted Rias who was looking at him with a face of disbelief. Anyway, continuing with what we said. We went against office to use the Dragon Eater, Samuel, against her. A Samuel. You know the story of Adam and Eve, right? Asia nodded to Georg's question that continued. Samuel is the serpent who tempted Adam and Eve to eat the fruit of knowledge. That action provoked the wrath of the God of the Bible, who gained a strong hatred toward serpents and dragons. So the biblical God cursed Samuel with many curses on his body, turning him into a being with the deadliest poison of all. Samuel is the reason why dragons are represented as evil in the Bible, a being that was born from God's evil intentions. The God of the Bible obviously saw how dangerous Samuel was, so he sealed him in the depths of the Cossetus. A being like that is undoubtedly a monstrosity, created by a god so pure that is said has no bad intentions, but apparently that's how it is. Ha ha ha. That's true, that god was undoubtedly crazy if he created such a monstrosity that we invoked to devour office. Heracles laughed funny, this was funny. What do you think of listening to this, Zenovia and Arena? The aforementioned, still disconcerted, saw Siegfried who was laughing gracefully. Dot, how does it feel to know that the god in which they believed so much, who was considered a pure being who did not could he have bad intentions, did he actually have them and created such a monstrosity? The trio of the church, upon hearing how these heroes insulted their god, wanted to shout at them and complain to them, wanting to deny everything they said, but... What they said made some sense, they know that the dragons are represented as evil in the Bible, and if what about Samuel is true, then you know why. Even to this day, there are things that they do not know about the church and the dark side that it has. The Sacred Sword Project was proof of this, people who misused the word of God and were just ambitious people who wanted power, not caring if they should sacrifice orphans like Kibba. They even deceived all their followers for a long time about the death of God because they needed them to fear him. Many would feel used by that. Samuel's poison is considered the most lethal poison of all. There are not many who can survive it. Georg spoke, drawing everyone's attention again. We use Samuel for the purpose of stripping Office of his powers. 
Even if she is the being defined as the infinite, where many would say that ending the infinite is impossible, that is true to a certain extent. But since Office is a dragon, that made her vulnerable to Samuel's poison, and we managed to remove her powers. Although apparently it was only half, but it's something. H how did they summon that Samuel? And what do they want to do with Office's power? Kiba asked while he was in a cold sweat. Simple, Kiba Yudo. Now Siegfried takes the floor. Our intention is to create a new office. One that obeys us and does what we tell her. Since we get tired of pleasing the original. The Great Red is not our closest goal. Do you really think we would still face being like that? Some had to agree with Siegfried. Not even the strongest gods would fight against the most powerful entity of all. As for how we invoke it. Well, we made a deal with Hades. Everyone looked at Georg with surprise on their faces. Hades had access to the seal where Samuel was, so he lent it to us on a limited basis. That god doesn't even care about helping people like us, if with that he manages to exterminate the demons and fallen angels from the face of the world. Land. So this attack is your work? Kiba asked with accumulated anger, did Hades tell you to carry out an attack against the underworld? Yes and no. Everyone was confused when they heard what Georg said. What do you mean, yes and no? Dot to explain myself. This entire attack on the underworld was planned by Hades, although he received the help of Shalba Beelzebub to carry it out. Shalba is still alive, Rias asked the question with great surprise, while those who knew him were also surprised. That's how it is. We helped him in exchange for him cooperating with us in some investigations, but in the end. He betrayed us and broke the agreement we had. Georg sighed as he said that and frowned. Shalba left and made a deal with Hades. Hades wanted the weakened office for something we don't know, but Shalba agreed to help him. Hades even gave Shalba a special spell to force Leonardo to forcefully enter Balance Breaker and create those creatures you see here. So Shalba used the boy who was with you and created those things, right? That's right. Siegfried nodded to what Kiba said. Ah, this was not part of our plan, but we still decided to take advantage of the situation to have fun. And if possible, kill one of their leaders. Everyone was horrified to hear that. They know that these creatures are so strong that perhaps only their leaders or a god can defeat them without so much trouble. But the hero faction had Cao Cao, who possesses the true Longinus, the same one that is capable of killing the mass and the gods. But returning to the topic of the Sekiruite. Everyone paid full attention to Georg who adjusted his glasses. Dotty along with Valerie's team, battled to get out of my artificial dimension, even with us together with the fates of Hades. They cornered us, they even had Tiamat, one of the king dragons and the strongest among them, on their side. So things went very against us. Everyone was surprised to hear that and couldn't believe it. Valerie even having Tiamat on his team. They had heard of Tiamat, but they had never seen her. But they know that she is the strongest among the current Dragon King. But they were wondering, why would someone like Tiamat also join Valerie? They or continued with his story. When we thought it was our defeat at their hands, it was at that moment that Shalba appeared at the scene. Where the first thing she did was use Leonardo and create those monsters, and then send them to the underworld. And the other thing he wanted was office. We weren't there to know what happened next, but we received a report that the Sekir Yuite was the only one who stayed in my artificial dimension that was collapsing, and confronted Shalba to save office couldn't do anything because his power was unstable. However, although the Sekir Yuite could possibly win against Shalba, what he suffered afterwards undoubtedly surpassed him to the extreme. W what? He risked asking Kiba as he swallows a lump in his throat, he doesn't like where this is going. Simple, we received a report that Shalba was carrying some arrows dipped in Samuel's blood. Do you understand what it means? When everyone heard what Georg said, they turned pale and feared the worst. Dot, it's just as they think, and it's not there is reason to make excuses. Shalba and Haidu say killed each other. The boy may have beaten Shalba, but he was infected by Samuel's poison. So, as you can see and understand, Haidu say, your beloved Sekiruite. He is dead. Dot. Those words, that last sentence. All that hit hard all the young demons who went into a state of pure shock and trembled slightly, even more so the Gremory who couldn't believe it. And no. It's not possible. My essay can't. Well, it's true, Rhea's Gremory. Siegfried spoke, drawing everyone's attention. As we already said, Samuel's poison is the deadliest poison of all that can instantly kill dragons and snakes. Haidu essay having a dragon type sacred gear makes him vulnerable to dragon slayer's elements, and the same applies with Samuel. And if you still don't believe what we say, then ask yourself this. Why isn't Haidu Issei here fighting for the underworld? Georg's words made everyone pale, and some breathe heavily. Even though he broke away from you, he swore to protect the underworld no matter what. And it's been three days since all this started, and there are no traces of the Sekir Yuite on the battlefield. So that's enough proof for you to believe it. He, that's right. Jean supported what Georg said. We are sorry for you, but your beloved Sekir Yuite and greatest hero is dead. We killed him. 
Those words hit hard in the hearts and minds of the Gremory, as well as the children who heard everything from a distance. Dot. And no. I I I say. Rhea saying that fell to the ground on her knees while tears began to come out of his eyes. I say. Kun. Akeno, like Rhea's, fell to the ground on her knees while he had a bewildered expression, and silent tears came out of his eyes. Senpai. Kaneko let two tears fall from his eyes as he trembled slightly and clenched his fists. Asia didn't say anything, but she fell to the ground anyway and started crying, she wanted to say that what they said was a lie. But she couldn't, what they said was true. Issei wasn't in the underworld fighting. Irina, like Asia, fell to the ground with her head down and began to cry silently, she couldn't believe or she still didn't process what she had heard. While Zenobia had her head down and gritted her teeth containing her anger, although she lost. Strength in his arms and his sword ended up on the ground. Braswis couldn't believe what he heard either, and without knowing why, a feeling of discomfort occurred in his heart. And that caused a few seconds later he also began to cry along with the others. Gaspar just continued with his shocked face, looking at the hero faction. He even couldn't process what he heard. No. Haidu. Saji also fell to his knees on the ground while he hits the ground with his fist. No. No, you don't. The wop I dragon. Did she die? He, that's right, little children. If it weren't like that, he would be here fighting for the underworld. Op I Dragon Kun has died. Jean with some mockery, said those cruel words that only made even the children, they began to cry in silence. No. My friend. You. Kibble looked up from him, directing a look with every intention of killing the hero faction who didn't even flinch before his face. Are you upset and sad? Don't worry, once we kill them if they wish, they will be able to accompany their Sekiruite in the other world. Although of course, the Sekuyute's soul must also have been destroyed by Samuel's poison, so, literally. Apart from being dead, the soul of the Sekuyute no longer exists in this world or in the world. It became nothing, just cosmic dust. Siegfried's words seemed to be enough to add fuel to the fire, making the state worse. Of those affected. I say senpai dot did he die. Gaspar asked that question still bewildered as he took a couple of steps forward and staggered a little. That's how it is. It is not necessary for them to distrust. Even Office and the hacker Yuku Valerie Lucifer were defeated by Samuel. So the Seker Yuate was not able to survive that curse. Georg laughs after saying that. Senpai. S. Senpai. No. A tear came out of Gaspar's eyes, and his entire body began to tremble, just as his eyes became cloudy. His thoughts were filled with despair after hearing that the Senpai he admired was killed. He looked down and was silent. And then, Gaspar stood up in a shaky manner. He slowly looked up and also had an expression that is not often seen on a living person. One that, although it gave chills to some as well as the hero faction, did not flinch at Gaspar's dark expression. I'm already tired of all this drama. Let's get it over with. I. Heracles could not continue speaking since that word was heard that sounded like a curse in a low voice, and. The moment after he said that, the surroundings were completely covered in darkness. The ground, the sky, the landscape, everything is being enveloped by darkness. It was so dark and cold that even the light has disappeared. Plus said darkness was coming out of Gaspar's body, and he is dying everything black. This phenomenon caught everyone's attention, even Rhea's and the other girls who put aside their sadness for a moment of knowing that Issei died, to know what was happening. W what is this? Jean sounded surprised and scared at what they were seeing. There was nothing but pure darkness everywhere. Even the buildings that were next to her before had vanished as if they had been just a hallucination, and everything became dark. B but what the hell is that? Everyone paid attention to Heracles as he watched as a strange humanoid being appeared. No, more like. More humanoid beings made from the darkness of the place appeared and began to approach the hero faction. The eyes of said beings were intense red and shone nearly. A stay away. Get away at one Siegfried quickly swings his swords trying to cut those dark beings, but. Nothing, his attacks did nothing to them. And seeing how one of those things extended its arms and caught his sword made Siegfried break out in a cold sweat. Stay away from me. Jean, in fear and desperation, summoned many holy swords around her, but. These swords were absorbed by the darkness and left her unprotected coup. Let me go. Get off of me. Heracles was desperately trying to get those dark beings off of him. Which wrapped around her right arm and his left leg. I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill all of you until none of you are left alive. That sinister voice. That was not Gaspar's voice. This was a dangerous voice, which included all emotions, anger, resentment and curse. Aorg would quickly activate magic circles to attack, but. His circles were also absorbed by darkness. W what is this? It's not magic nor the power of a sacred gear how could he make my circle disappear? Georg was scared by Gaspar's actions and activated a defensive circle, as well as many varieties of spells with different attributes, and fired magic against the darkness. 
but the dark entities made their eyes shine bright red, and the magic fired by Georg froze in the air. And instantly, red eyes appeared in all parts of this dark world. And the magical attacks that were frozen began to be devoured by the darkness. The faces of Georg, Siegfried, Heracles and Jean turned into one of absolute terror as they saw that their attacks and attempts to free themselves were useless. The dark humanoids began to walk towards them once again. They had presence and movements of creatures that are unreal. They got closer and closer to Georg and his companions, who turned pale with fear. Georg quickly created his mist from his long longinus and controlled it to envelop Gasper, but. Instantly, his mist was devoured by darkness as if it were nothing. H how is this possible? My fog. Devour. De dot devour. I have to devour. Their magic, their weapons and the fog don't work. I will eat them and restrict. E but. W what's wrong with Gasper Kun? Asked Kiba, sweating coldly like the others. I is is it a balance breaker? Ross was spoke as he trembled with nerves and shook his head dot and no. That's not all. Is it? H his natural power of him is a vampire. H his natural power as a vampire. Asked Sona, who was sweating from nerves and adjusted his glasses dot whether it is so or not. This is something that is on a different level. There is. The redeed stopped by to see her cousin who had a serious face dot, this power that was dormant within Gaspar Vladi is something beyond our imagination. This is. A part of some kind of monster. What things did you do to him or is he really your servant? I, I don't know, but. Rhea spoke with a trembling voice. T, the reason why the vampires of the Vladi house banished Gaspar was. Why were they afraid of that power of his and not the forbidden valor view? Returning to the humans, they all desperately tried to free themselves from those things. Georg released all of his magical attacks along with the mist of his longinus, but all of that was stopped by the glowing eyes, and then they were devoured by the darkness. The balance breaker. Jean, in an act of desperation, created a great dragon made of sacred swords, but. Said dragon was trapped and stopped by the darkness, and then devoured by a coup.w what the hell is that vampire? I let go of me. Siegfried tried to get those dark beings off him, but it was useless. Said beings restrained their swords and began to envelop his body. G. Georg. Get us out of here. Heracle shouted that no matter what he did, he couldn't get those things off of him. Who my fog. My magic doesn't work at all. What the hell is he Georg had a desperate expression as he saw that all of his magic circles and his mist were devoured by darkness no matter what he did. The darkness that was enveloping the humans moved and began to mold into the shapes of beasts. Thus, wolves appeared with only eyes. Five winged birds. Two mouths of dragons. Spiders with more than ten legs. They all looked like creatures that have surpassed existing creatures. These abnormal monsters gathered around Georg, Siegfried, Heracles and Jean who were immobilized. Who? W we have to go back. Georg decided not to continue confronting Gasper and made a magic circle appear under him. He's trying to escape. Zenobia shouted, wanting to avoid that, but. Instantly, limbs like arms emerged from the darkness that grabbed Georg by his arms, and this scared him, and even more so when he saw that his transport circle was also devoured by the darkness. The damn. It's over. It's the end. Georg and his companions, upon hearing Gasper's sinister voice, could only see how those dark beings were getting closer and closer to them. A certain amount of monsters for each one, and then. The I I of those screams belonged to the hero faction who were enveloped by the dark monsters. And they were devoured by darkness, in silence. When the darkness cleared, everyone saw that they had returned to the Lilith capital. When everyone looked around, they saw that in front of a static Asper were the members of the hero faction, lying on the ground, apparently unconscious. Dot. All of them had serious wounds on their bodies and were bleeding a little. Heracles had his right arm and left leg jet black. Jean had the entire left side of her body jet black, along with few black spots on her body. Part of his face. Siegfried, on the other hand, had almost his entire body jet black, leaving only his head and right arm as the only unaffected parts. Heiku. Everyone, upon hearing that moan, saw that Siegfried tried to stay conscious even though he couldn't get up. And the human turned his attention to Gasper, who had his eyes still glowing red. True. When he said that word, he finally fell unconscious. The three humans were miraculously alive. And instantly, Gasper staggered a little, then also fell to the ground, unconscious before the incredulous gaze of everyone without exception. Hmm. Where is that fog wizard? Sarayarg's question made everyone start looking for Georg, but. Nothing. He was not at the place. W has he been completely devoured by the darkness? Kiba said while sweating coldly and slowly approaches the unconscious Gasper and kneels near him. What happened in the house? Bloody really. They say. The blonde, upon hearing the muffled voice of his mistress, saw how he is, along with the others, even with what happened with Gasper, became depressed again over Issei's death. Rias. Sona approached her friend trying to console her, but. 
Even she knows that she can't, and seeing how Rias began to cry for her, only made her lower her head in sorrow. Is. Say. San. Asia while she cried in silence was hugged by Zenovia and Irina who shared her pain. Why is all this happening? Sereard clenched his fist as he said that and saw the state in which everyone was left. This was a disaster. Bibakun. Subaki approached the blonde who had his head bowed while he was kneeling on the ground and trembling slightly. But the girl's hand on her shoulder made him look at her with a face that was somewhere between sad and angry. Tsubaki the best she could do for him was to give him a hug to calm him down, while Kiba apparently cried in silence. Hey, and to think that even the Lucifer group, who are the strongest in the underworld. They cannot defeat the Jaburwiki. Kao Kao was on top of a tall building in the Lilith capital, seeing how in the distance, Grafia and the Lucifer group could only hold the Jaburwiki, but not defeat it. Dot, it's a shame that the superiors don't want to go out and play, what a disappointment. Finally I find you, unhappy wretch. Kao Kao the moment he heard that voice, he saw how a white gust went against him and created an explosion in the place. An intact Kao Kao would emerge from the smokescreen, narrowly escaping the attack and using his spear against that building, he was able to break his fall until he could land on the ground without any problem. When Kao Kao looked up, he saw that from the air descended a white armor with blue gems, golden peaks and wings of trails of blue light. Oh, so you finally decided to show up, Valerie. It took longer to remove the curse than you think. Valerie landed on the ground as she said that and a silent layer of blue aura enveloped her, dot will charge you for last time. But more because of Issei. Heh, I admit that I was surprised when they gave me the news of her death. Still. Kao Kao would turn his spear and aim it at the girl dot one less obstacle, only you would be missing, and then no one will be able to stop me. Now you sound like a villain, Kao Kao. But no matter what he says. Valerie would increase his aura drastically dot you will never understand. So are you ready for your last battle, most powerful hacker Yuaku? When Kao Kao said that, his spear shone brightly for a moment and instantly. The seven orbs that represent his balance breaker appeared around him. As quiet as ever. I always am. But rather, this will be your last day alive. Miserable. When Valerie said that, his wings of light spread like never before and began to emit demonic power. And the pure white armor was enveloped by a very bright light. Then the jewels sparkled, and. I, who is about to awaken. I am the hacker Yuaku who will bring the truth to the darkness. Let's go Valerie Chan it's time to show our truth Lux and Helena's voices resonated through the gems of the armor, giving their support to Valerie. I will walk the path of domination and destruction of infinite dreams. What we will strengthen is the position of the silver celestial dragon and time to walk the silver illusory path. I will be the true empress of the silver white dragon because we are the hacker Yuaku who brings the silver illusions and the one who shines like a star of tomorrow and they will have to obey the illusions of silver white in the perfect bad ways. Empire juggernaut overdrive. The flash of energy was such that it illuminated the entire area. Although Kao Kao was not impressed by the power that the hacker Yuaku was releasing, he admits that it was monstrous and worthy of admiration. The flash died at the same time that the energy that enveloped the armor was released from it and gave way to the silver armor of the hacker Yuaku. The silver flash along with the golden details of the armor gave a unique look that not even the juggernaut drive had. Now. Shall we start with the last fight, Kao Kao? Valerie put himself on guard when saying that and then, from a magic circle, he would take out a sword that the human recognized. Ask Lan, huh? The sword of the Seker Yuate. It's a little different from before, but it's the same. Kao Kao with a satisfied smile, turns his spear and stands guard. Dot, that's the only thing they were able to recover from Haidu Issei, right? That's how it is. And I will fight using the only memory he left. Valerie puts himself on guard along with the sword and emanates demonic silver aura. But that statement, the human descendant of the famous Kao Kao Meng and the descendant of the original Mao Lucifer, launched an attack against each other. The battle that could decide the fate of the underworld had begun, without knowing that a hope was being forged. Chapter 13. Hope, on the outskirts of the Lilith capital. The Lucifer group was fighting against the Jaburwiki in front of them, and they had to admit that this thing was a big problem. The cuts of the Lucifer knight named Sauji Akita, Kiba's master, and the powerful demonic attacks of Grafia only managed to somewhat stop the advance of that thing, but they did not give fixed damage, and that was making them nervous. Shit that thing doesn't die with anything. The bishop of the group called McGregor said this somewhat frustrated while he launched different elemental attacks from his magic circles that only obstructed the Jaburwiki's path. What's more, the Jaburwiki would create smaller monsters, not the size of the bandanages, but big ones like 10 to 20 meters tall, that was already the last straw. And said Jaburwiki hatchlings began to shoot rays of light from the only eye they had. And that was bad for the demons in the area, who more than once had to be protected by protection circles or ice domes created by McGregor. Who was already fed up with that thing and created magic circles under it, and these exploded so that his advance was diminished, and at the same time Sauji went on the attack. 
Knight Lucifer, at an insane speed, managed to cut off one of the Jaburwaki's legs, up to where the knee is supposedly, causing him to stagger, but he remained firm and regenerated within seconds. Okay, maybe they do have a serious problem between hands. A very big one. DCH. In all my years I had never faced a being like that. One of the pawns of the group Beowulf said that clicking his tongue in irritation. This was annoying. That demonstrates the fearsome power of the Longinus. It is specifically monstrous. Grafia had lived too long to know what the Longinus were capable of. She knows the destructive power they have. Especially the first four of the top, capable of destroying everything in one attack if they set their minds to it. Of course, she doesn't mean that the others are just as dangerous. This thing and its spawn have nothing to limit them, that's why they are more dangerous. Tsaoji dodged a light attack from that thing, while listening to his companions and keeping his mind on the fight, at the same time that the few supreme class demons from the area that accompanied them, attacked the Jaburwiki with everything they had. But they hadn't made a single scratch. Brafia weighed his options, there wasn't much they could do, and. It's over a sudden but powerful, extremely hot blast hit the Jaburwiki in the face and burned it, as well as making him retreat a little to the surprise of everyone who looked up to see. A beautiful woman with long straight blue hair with dragon wings spread from her back was Tiamat. And her appearance in the place confused many who wondered who she was, but seeing the expression of anger that was on her his face. It was scary and that was saying a lot. The dragon attacked the beast again, this time on the legs. Managing to burn them with his blue flames and making him stop. An opportunity that Sauji did not waste and with divine speed, he managed to cut off both of the Jaburwaki's legs and made him fall to the ground while roaring with fury. But his legs began to regenerate, but the blue flames made it slower. Diamat stepped onto the ground after seeing that, and she stood in front of the demons with her back to them, while she looked at the Jaburwaki with great rage. Because of you. He. Tiamat clenched her fist as she was unable to formulate words. He still hated knowing that. He, he was no longer. Excuse me. Grafia spoke and she got a little closer to Tiamat who didn't stop by to see her. Thank you for the help, but. Are you. I am Tiamat. And I come to help put an end to that thing. Tiamat's unimportant response was enough for all the demons who heard it to be surprised. They didn't expect that the strongest among the king dragons would come to help in this situation. Well, we appreciate your help, Tiamat-sama. Sauji made a slight bow towards the dragon who did not turn to look at him. Thank him later when we finish that thing. It's getting up. Tiamat and the demons would see how the Jaburwaki stood up with difficulty and let out a loud roar that echoed throughout the place, causing some to cover their faces. Ears. But the dragon sharpened her gaze and raised her aura upon seeing that, and. You want to play her off, huh? Well, let's play. When Tiamat said that, she quickly took flight into the air as it began to shine, and a light blue glow was present in the place. When said glow dissipated, everyone could see in the air a huge dragon with blue scales of at least 10 meters high. They will pay for what they have done Dian. That furious scream from the dragon was accompanied by a gigantic blue flame that impacted the beast and bathed it in flames. When the demons saw that, they were speechless, but anyway. They must put an end to that thing no matter what, so everyone goes on the attack again. In the dimensional gap. The most powerful existence of all was flying in that dimensional space without much to do, just fly. However, on his back. The office Auroboros was sitting on her knees while in front of her, lying on the ground, was the scale mail armor of the Sekiruite without showing signs of movement. And then, it was then that Aurora would be present in the place, which came from Great Red. It's ready. Office raised her face as she said that as she stood up and walked to a certain direction of the big red dragon's back. Where she was able to find a lump that made it look like it was a mosquito bite, but that wasn't the case. The lump would shine brightly and when it dissipated, that lump was no longer in place. But what appeared in front of Office was a body. A body of a person, with brown hair and was a teenager, with eyes closed. Office would then approach the scale male armor and place her hand on its chest as she glowed. Greg, it's time. Ah, finally. How cool. The voice of the Welsh dragon was heard through the gem on the right gauntlet so. Do your thing, Office. I will disappear the armor when you say so, well. Office nodded to what Drake said, and by concentrating some energy on her hand, he put it back on the chest of the armor. Now. When she said that, the scale mail armor would glow and then disappear into particles of red light within seconds. And then. Office, raising her hand, saw that in it was a small white orb with red green. The dragon lowly would approach the body that was similar to his say in appearance, and would kneel near it. Dot. You died as a human. But you will be reborn as a dragon in every right. Office after saying that would bring that orb in his hand closer to the chest of the body and then, said orb would enter the boy's body and give a slight shine until it goes out. But that done, Office decided to wait for something to happen, and then. After half a minute, it was seen that the boy moved the fingers of his hand slightly, and how his eyes wanted to open. 
And as the seconds passed, the brunette slowly opened his eyes. Where dot where am I? The first thing Issei did when he opened his eyes was look around. Ugh.for some reason he didn't want to get up. And when he did, he was surprised that he was on territory he did not know. It seemed to be a desert. But the ground was red and hard. He looked up to see the sky, and great was his surprise when he saw that the sky was multicolored. Why is heaven like this? What do I do here? I I don't remember well. His memory of him was confused, he only remembers going to confront Shalva after the guy hit him with those arrows. And from there. And from there. Dot. So you woke up. Office's voice made Issei go to see her and finally remember everything that happened. Oh Office. W where. You finally wake up, I must admit that I was worried for a second Drake's voice was present, he sounded more than relieved to see the young man awake. Be Drake. What a relief, but. What happened? Where we are. Well. We are over Great Red. Office responded, interrupting Drake while he kicked the red ground. H how. Look at it yourself, partner. Drake suggested him and he listened. Issei would then notice that there was a large horn a few meters away from him. He walked towards it and when he looked closely. The ground was made of scales. And when he got to where the horn. He realized which was on the head of a great creature known to him. Because it was. Great Red Issei saw himself face to face with the powerful dragon, who continued on his way without paying attention to the small being a few meters away from him. P because we are on the Great Red. The boy asked himself, returning to office. Let's say. It's thanks to Great Red that you're still alive, Issei sat waiting for Drake to tell him what he needs to know, after you defeated Shalva, the curse took the best of you, an entire dimension was collapsing. And before anything bad could happen, Great Red suddenly appeared on the scene. At that moment, Office rode the Great Red and took you with her, and here we are, in the dimensional gap. Several days have passed since then. I see. That explains how I got here. But being next to the Great Red by chance. I must be very lucky. Issei said admiring the place, until something clicked in her mind. Ah, that. H we've been here for several days. Gosh. Everyone must be worried. But this. I think it could only have been your power that attracts others. Only in that way can I think that you attracted the Great Red naturally. Issei was a little surprised at what Drake said. Good luck to you your opportunity to meet legendary beings is already abnormal. That power you have is dangerous, but you are very difficult to predict as usual. Issei, upon hearing that, went to see Office who had stopped hitting the Great Red to start looking at the sky of the place. Didn't you come home? This is my home. Where I was born. Oh yeah. Bad use of words. Issei formulates a new phrase, one to better ask what she wanted, didn't you return to the underworld or the human world? You said. Let's go home together. That's why I'm here. Office gave her answer, as if she was the most obvious one in the entire world. Issei laughed a little, without a doubt she was a very pure being. For her to have taken everything she said seriously. Oh, by the way. What happened to the summoning ritual that was going to get us out of here? The ritual was carried out, but only your sword, Ascalon, was transported. What dot but what the hell? Issei went to see his boosted gear, and when he wanted to identify if it was true, it was true. The blade of the sword did not come out, and he couldn't channel his energy either. Aura. H how did this happen? It must have happened at the moment when Office took you to her. Remember that you used your sword to support yourself and when you fell unconscious, the sword fell to the ground. So I guess the ritual occurred at that moment when Office took you. I take her with me, and since she couldn't take you, she took the sword. Even with that, everything is very confusing. Jeez. Everyone must think I'm dead if they could only get Ascalon back, and. Issei stopped her words and suddenly, he took her hand to her beating heart, an image of her appeared in her mind. Valerie. She. She must be sad if she thinks I died. Issei mentally cursed himself for worrying his friends, and surely Azazel knows it too. But more because surely Valerie must be sad for him. Good partner. Moving on to another topic. Issei paid attention to Drake who decided to continue explaining even with everything that happened, I think I understand why they left calmly, because they knew that you would continue forward, what are you talking about Drake? Who left? Look inside the boosted gear and see for yourself. Issei, a little confused, accepted Drake's suggestion, and it didn't take him long to take his consciousness to the bottom of the sacred gear. Only to see himself in the same place as always. Only there was no one anymore. The predecessors who were there were not there. They were here before. No longer. They had disappeared. Then they are not. That's right, partner. Your soul was at risk of disappearing due to Samuel's poison. It was too late for your body, so we had to rule it out. What would be affected after the body was destroyed was your soul. At this rate, your soul was about to be eliminated by Samuel's poison. I even thought that there was no way out, and I was prepared to go to another possessor. Drake's voice brought him out of his thoughts. H how did I survive? Well. 
Drake sighed with regret and then continued speaking, the remains of the souls of the former possessors protected your soul from Samuel's curse. They became the substitute to receive Samuel's curse and gave me the opportunity to remove your soul from your body, a moment that I took advantage of to bind it to the armor. One wrong step, one more second. And no. Would have worked. Hearing that, Issei couldn't say more. He just lowered his head sadly and few tears came out. This farewell was not what I expected to have with him. As with Elsha and Belzard, he would have liked to talk more with them. Maybe, that sacrifice they made for him was their way of redeeming all the stupid things they did in life and, also, a way of thanking him to get them out of that curse that filled them with pure hatred. Well. Issei turned around to see the now empty seats. He bowed and gave sincere thanks from the bottom of his heart to his senpais. Swearing that the sacrifice they made will not be in vain. All things considered, he was determined more than ever. Thank you. For everything. After saying that, Issei emerged from the bottom of the boosted gear and returned to reality. With office watching him curiously. But something else would click in Issei's mind who saw his hand and body. B, but there is something I don't understand. If my body was destroyed. Then why am I as if nothing had happened? Ah, that. Ha ha ha. Don't think I didn't do anything while you were sleeping, but that body, it's a gift from Great Rat and Office. H. How? Issei sounded exalted, and he was still confused. The original body was destroyed, there was nothing to do. But that new body of yours was created by the blood of Great Red and the power of office at those words of Drag, Issei was practically frozen and speechless. Ha 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 ha, partner. You were revived by the powers of the true dragon and the god dragon. In other words, you have been reborn. Let's prepare for the counterattack. Anyway, how does your new body feel? It feels like I have my old body. Issei said looking at his hand and closing it a couple of times, using force. But what kind of changes did I get compared to my previous body? An appearance, shape and so on you are equal to a human. You will be able to continue with your current life as before. As for the rest, everything is fine. Only now you are no longer half human, you are a 100% dragon in your biological system, but in appearance you are human. You could say that you are like a great red baby. That sounds a bit bizarre, but since. Issei shrugged his shoulders when saying that. Well, and finally. Also the power of office runs through your body. A body made by the power of infinity and dream, that in itself is an abnormality. In addition, your physical capabilities were increased more than before. Although although the previous ones were good, you were originally garbage, so it would only be that you improved a lot. Well, I'm sorry I was originally trash I was a normal high school boy until a few months ago, Issei replied to his classmate, well he crossed his arm somewhat indignantly. One way or the other. Moving on to another matter. Issei pay attention to Drake it turns out that the great rat has been reacting to people's dreams and the underworld is under attack. Ah, that's right. The creatures that Shalba created. Issei said to himself, slapping himself in the face for forgetting that. When he said that, the Great Red gave a loud roar, warping the space and showing the battle in the underworld, the huge creatures were also seen destroying the cities. D, that's. The Great Red is reflecting the dreams and feelings of all the inhabitants of the underworld Drake responded to the boy's question. Why everyone? I incredible. The Great Red represents dreams, having dreams, seeing dreams, the imagined dream. He's showing us. Maybe your strong desire to return home made Great Red appear before you responding to your dream, yeah. But this. It's real. Issei sharpened his gaze, having a certain dot we have to go back. They need us. Yeah. Let's go back partner. Can I ask you to do that, Great Red? Can you take us to the underworld? Drake asked a true dragon, and then. Great Red would give a loud roar, and the space in front of them curved and a crack was created. From there, they could see a city. And judging from the color of the sky, it was obvious that it was the underworld. Dot. Office, I'm leaving. To the place I can return to. Issei said to the lowly who was next to him. I see. That. Makes me a little jealous. Office sounded a little lonely. Issei knew that there was no need for Office to feel alone, so she extended her hand to him. You will come with me. Office opened her eyes in surprise, and Issei gave her a smile. Dot, you are my friend, right? Then come. We will go together. At that moment, the Auroboros dragon, who was said to be the strongest being among all, smiled. Issei and I are friends. I will go with you. Issei and Office each held each other's hands. Yeah, that's good. They are going back home. To the place where they can return. When they emerged from the dimensional gap next to Great Red. The brunette was surprised by what appeared before his eyes. It was the Jabariki, and without a doubt he must admit that it is immensely large, much larger than Great Red. And it was then that a flaming explosion occurred near the Jabariki. B, but what? Over there. Office pointed in a certain direction, interrupting Issei who saw where the lowly was pointing. 
Then they could see how a large blue dragon from the air launched its powerful blue flames that seemed to do some damage to the Jaburwaki. Obviously Issei recognized her. Diamat. Issei sounded surprised and happy to see her, and more so because she is fighting for the underworld. Then he happened to see the ground where attacks on the Jaburwaki were taking place, and he could visualize the Lucifer group. Ah, those must undoubtedly be Grafia san and the other servants of Serzich's. Oh, even the Kiranenku is there fighting, how unexpected. They are all people with experience. They all have abnormal powers. Issei had to agree with Drake. He even doubts a little that with her current power he can perhaps defeat Grafia, she is the strongest of that group. Ah, better forget that and move on to better matters. They have problems defeating that thing created by Shalva. Issei sharpened his gaze when he saw the monster. I'm surprised that even with Grafia san, the Lucifer group, and Tiamat, they can't defeat that thing, but if you hold back your progress. So, let our great friend do us that favor. Drag suggested, and Issei understood a little what he meant Great Red, if not it's too much trouble. Can you take care of that thing? What he received a response was a somewhat loud roar, and his eyes shining I see, thank you. We thank you. Anyway, we have to get closer and let him see us. Issei nodded to what Drag said, it was his best option. Meanwhile, with those who were fighting against the Jaburwaki. The thing was very probable. McGregor with his magic circles would manage to freeze two of the Jaburwaki's legs, and Sauji took advantage of cutting them with his sword. Tiamat in her dragon form would fly at a certain high speed around the Jaburwaki and bathe it in her blue flames, which although they burned that thing, they didn't kill it. Everyone would stand in front of the Jaburwaki, and the dragon queen stood in front of the demons. Damn. How are we going to kill that thing? Bishop McGregor gasped a little, but could continue. He had already had very long battles before. Don't give up one way or another it has to be achieved otherwise. He. Huh. Tiamat would stop her words because she felt a unique dragon presence, and when she looked up at the sky. She could visualize a huge red dragon 100 meters high flying through on top of the Jaburwaki. Gee great red. How. Grafia surprised by what Tiamat said, she would focus her gaze better on the sky, and she could see it. The true dragon flying above the Jaburwaki. W what is that being doing here? The tower of the Lucifer group, Surtur II, said that with admiration and some fear, when seeing the strongest entity of all. Maybe. Just pure chance. McGregor responded, believing it was the most obvious answer of all. This is very strange. Tiamat would fix her gaze better on him and see how the true dragon changed his trajectory. Heading to where they were. H.A. V. He's coming here. But what? Grafia would adjust her vision better and she would see that it was true, she was getting a little closer to where they were. But what ended up disconcerting her, like everyone else, is seeing how the Great Red opened her mouth and had it loaded like a flame there. Hey, hey, wasn't he peaceful? Ask a little upset Surtur second. That's right, bud. Tiamat would see how the true dragon intended to launch the attack on her, and that scared her anyway everyone, take cover. At Tiamat's cry, everyone heeded and created a fort to at least resist the impact, then. The true dragon without hesitation would launch a powerful and enormous red blast from his mouth that went against the Jaburwaki. Which when he saw that attack go against him, he could not do anything and received it fully, being swallowed by said attack and creating a powerful and gigantic explosion that resonated everywhere. When the explosion ended and the great glow created dissipated, the demon sighed in relief for having withstood the impact while their barrier made by everyone shattered. And when they looked around, they didn't believe what they saw. D the Jaburwaki, it was. Grafia was speechless at what she saw. Since, in front of them, where the Jaburwaki used to be, there was an immense, very deep crater of at least 20 diameters or more. B because she helped us. Pon Beolf asked that without getting an answer, since no one had one. H hey. H there's someone coming down from the Great Red. Upon hearing what Sauji said, everyone would look at the sky, and then. Everyone would see that at a certain height, something close to Great Red. A red armor with green jewels was flying with its wings spread. Obviously everyone would recognize that armor wherever it went. Then no. It can't be. Tiamat said that without being able to believe it and with a glow she would return to his human form while he looks more intently at the sky, then. The one everyone recognized as the Seker Yuite, she would take off his helmet and reveal his face. Letting them understand that it was the person they believed him to be, Issei Haidu. I'm very sorry for the delay. And I'm glad to see you again, Tiamat. Issei said that with a sincere and grateful smile. Diamat, upon seeing that it was Issei, felt great emotion and tears began to come out of her eyes. She couldn't believe it and even wondered if she was hallucinating. Issei would descend a little from the air, but when he was a few meters from the ground. Issei. Tiamat without hesitation would spread his wings and fly to where the brunette was at high speed, who got a little scared thinking that Tiamat would hit him. But it was quite the opposite, since when Tiamat managed to reach him, the only thing he did was hug him. 
and upon doing so and confirming that he was indeed the one, he began to cry even more. Say, say, why you're alive. I thought you had. Don't worry, Tiamat. In fact, it was Office and Great Red who saved me. Thanks to them, I'm here. Issei somewhat awkwardly responded to Tiamat's hug and with one hand caressed his head. I'm sorry for worrying you, sorry. And it doesn't matter anymore. Jay just, please. Don't leave again. Tiamat sounded pleading when she said that, which the boy caught. Don't worry, I will never leave your side unless you want me to. I will also be next to him. Said Office who appeared behind Issei and with his arms hugged him by the neck. Partner, look up. Issei, listening to Drake, with some hesitation did what he said and looked up at the sky. When he did, he saw the gigantic red dragon, Great Red, staring at him. More like he was staring at Drake. And when Great Red's eyes shone, a curve appeared in the sky. The curve expanded and became large enough for Great Red to pass through, and the sky of the dimensional gap was seen in that hole. Dot. Then, Great Red opened his mouth after looking at Issei once more, and for the first time, he could hear Great Red's voice. That although what he said sounded like a roar, Issei understood what he said. Dot. You know what to do. Those were the words of the true dragon who later disappeared from the place, passing through that dimensional hole, which closed after the dragon passed through it. Yes. Without a doubt I know. Issei nodded to what the true dragon said, and then sought Tiamat who had already calmed down. Tiamat where are Valerie and the others? The others went to the underworld of Hades to prevent him from intervening, well Valerie. Tiamat, saying that, looked towards the city of Lilith, and Issei did the same. She went to confront Cow Cow. If we beat him, we win. Good. But still, I'll go with her. I won't let her fight alone. Issei became serious as he said that and Tiamat blushed seeing her seriousness, it made him look cool. Issei. Valerie, he's over there. Afa said that and pointed to the city of Lilith. It's in the east. And Cow Cow is there too. They are both fighting. Thank you, Office. Well, let's go, Tiamat. I will follow you even to the end of the world if necessary. Tiamat nodded to what Issei said with a determined smile. But that said, the three dragons would leave the place, going to where Valerie and Cow Cow were, under the intriguing gaze of the demons, who could not believe what they saw, until the Sekiruite has returned. Sauji said that with admiration and Grafia nodded to what he said. There is still hope. The battle had started in a big way, where Cow Cow and Valerie were fighting each other with their weapons. The hacker Yuaku with her silver armor had a majestic divine speed that Cao Cao seemed unable to keep up with, but that thought was wrong. The human with his enthusiasm was able to keep up with his opponent using his agility and dodge or block quick attacks. Valerie taking distance from him at high speed creates and launches several silver and blue blasts towards Cao Cao, who used one of his orbs and redirected the attacks against Valerie. Divide, 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 divide. The girl absorbed the power of his returned attacks, and with that she gave herself an impulse at high speed against Cao Cao, thus attacking him with her sword. Which the human blocked countered back with his spear. The clash of the weapons of both made their energies say goodbye. Ha 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 ha. I see, so this is the power of the form that surpasses the juggernaut drive in theory, huh? Interesting. Cao Cao smiled, apparently pleased at such a display of power. Shut your mouth. I just need to hit you. Valerie sounded irritated when she said that, you could tell that she was doing everything possible to not lose her patience. Her opponent was provoking her, and the vanishing dragon knew it. But that, both opponents took a certain distance from each other and then attacked each other again with their weapons with great caution, while trying to open a space in the other's position to be able to attack and deliver a definitive blow. Cao Cao began to attack with the power of his spear, with the ability to eliminate a supreme class demon with a single touch, and that power was seen in the cuts and damage that the hacker Yuku's armor received. Valerie was not silly, I knew that if it weren't for the abnormal resistance of this armor, I would already be on the ground. Albion, I leave the armor regeneration to you. Okay, but because that is the sacred spear, it will take a little longer than usual, even with your magic power, Albion began to do his work while Valerie put his mind on the fight. But even so, the battle against the spear was more than difficult. Valerie felt some cuts in his armor after he blocked a previous attack from Cao Cao, who immediately made some spinning movements to make a feint that cost Valerie block and dodge his movements, and even more so when he made the spear grow a fraction of a second before he dodged it. He was saved by a miracle. Valerie immediately went on the attack, using several feint movements with his sword, while combining them with kicks and the occasional cut, he had to thank Arthur's sword training. But Cao Cao dodged and blocked them all, and always took advantage of damaging the armor from Valerie, who no longer cared about the armor, since Albion is taking care of it. Cao Cao could see that and opted to simply go on the attack and take advantage of some of his orb abilities when necessary. He knows that if he doesn't use them against Valerie with that new armor, he could harm him. 
Aokao would launch a wave of sacred power from the spear towards the hacker Yuaku, who narrowly dodged the attack, if that hit him, it would go badly for the demon part of him. And he couldn't split and absorb the power of that either, as it would be like ingesting poison. And he hasn't yet worked on a method for that problem. Ah, better mind in the fight. Valerie would quickly launch several silver blades with lightning towards Cao Cao, who, spinning his spear like a fan, dissipated cut off the attacks with his spear without any problem. Immediately, Valerie from a magic circle would launch a large blue flame towards Cao Cao, who cut the fire without much trouble using his spear. Seeing that made Valerie curse the guy's ability. But without even expecting it, he felt a stab on his shoulder and noticed damage to that area of the armor. You. I took advantage of attacking you there every time I could with minimal cuts, they didn't do much, but when they accumulated they finally did something. Cao Cao would point his spear against the hacker Yuaku who would guard Ascalon and prepared his fist's melee. Heh, well, that style is given to you a little apart from magic. I'll show you what I've learned from training with Issei. You learned something from him. Valerie aligned his wings of light to give him the speed he wants. I know that my old way of fighting won't work at all against you, and that's why I come to this. Also, I just want to wipe that smile off your face with my fist. That said, Valerie went to Cao Cao at high speed and stopped short to Cao Cao's surprise as he launched a blow towards the human's chest, who deflected the blow using the grip area of the spear and then attacked the hacker Yuaku who dropped down and kicked Cao Cao's legs, who dodged it by jumping. Valerie would quickly create and throw ice blades towards Cao Cao, who blocked them with his spear, but one managed to graze his cheek and leave a cut that was bleeding, it was not serious, but it was somewhat annoying. Cao Cao with the lower part of his, he throws Valerie back with a blow to the face. Even with that, Valerie spread his wings and gathered energy in them to go towards Cao Cao with his fist raised and gave him a blow that he barely blocked with the spear. He admits it, I don't expect that movement. And even more so when seeing that Hacker Yuku is indeed more skilled in technique than the last time they fought, but still. She doesn't overcome it. Valerie would quickly launch powerful electric shocks against Cao Cao, who would quickly and in a fraction of a second before, use one of his orbs on himself and disappear and then reappear a few meters away from Valerie. Close. All that was to get you closer to me and attack. Cao Cao wiped the sweat from his face. I hate to admit that one hit from you and I'm out. That's all I need. Ahahaha, <laughs> that's why I think you're a worthy opponent, Valerie. It's a pity that you rejected my invitation that time, even with your human half, you would have been perfect for my ideal of heroes. Valerie seemed to spit or at least I look like a dot I wouldn't join you dead, I don't want to show anything to anyone. Besides, your ambition is not to my liking. And you are not a hero, for me you are more of a villain, cow cow. That's what you think, but I assure you Valerie, in the end it's the humans who win. It's always like that. Cow cow put himself on guard while Valerie did the same. Not this time. But that said, they both returned to their fight. The battle between them seemed to have no end, and it didn't seem like they were at the climax either, or so it seemed. They both began to fight seemingly with everything they had, but that was more notable in Valerie, since Cao Cao still hasn't used his orbs, and that was frustrating. Valerie would launch electric blasts against Cao Cao, who used one of her orbs, and created a spiral that devoured her attacks, only for seconds from the same spiral to launch her attacks going against her. Valerie would dodge her attacks at high speed, and creating several magic circles around him, he would launch many attacks that were like a rain towards Cao Cao, who would use another orb. The Hapateratana that orb stood in front of Cao Cao, and after a flash of light, several humanoid-type beings appeared with spears in hand. These beings went towards the attacks and perished before them. Valerie knew that this was another of the three abilities that Cao Cao did not use against them on that occasion, there are only two more missing where one is the most dangerous of all, it is better not to go down the guard. Cao Cao, using another of his orbs, disappears and quickly reappears at Valerie's side, trying to impale him with his spear which Valerie narrowly avoided by turning on his axis and using one hand as support on the ground, he launched a kick towards Cao Cao, who narrowly blocked it with his spear, a second before, and it would have hit him. Valerie, using his hands as leverage against the ground, jumps, taking his distance from Cao Cao. I see that like Blade Blacksmith's balance breaker, these sentinels of yours cannot imitate your techniques either, but if your speed and some agility. Ha ha ha. That's right. But you already know that my skills still need to be polished since they are not yet complete, the same applies with this new armor of yours, right? Valerie's silence seemed to serve as a response, and Cao Cao smiled pleased when he saw that hit you. Anyway, my abilities are different from anyone else's or maybe even unique. DCH. You're very annoying. That said, both of them went against each other this time to start another fight. Valerie launched blows charged with electricity, and Cao Cao dodged or blocked them, and then boldly turned his spear and attacked Valerie with it, where the girl dodged that damn throws by the hair. One accurate cut of this and you could possibly lose or die. 
the Hapateratana, Aokao again summons his sentinels who went against Valerie, who would quickly take out Ascalon, and with two powerful cuts from left to right, he would destroy the sentinels. But Kao Kao would appear at her side and try to pierce her with his spear, but Valerie by inertia would block Kao Kao's spear with his sword, and both began to struggle with their weapons, but I wouldn't waste this. When Kao Kao said that, his right eye instantly shone gold, and Valerie knew it was the eye of Medusa. But it was too late when he wanted to react, as the arms of his armor turned into stone up to the forearms. And Kao Kao would quickly swing his spear to give Valerie two strong cuts on the front of his armor, breaking it and causing the girl to let out a moan along with blood, and then receive a sacred blast from the human spear that made her retreat a few meters. Valerie would kneel on the ground with one leg and with some force destroy the parts turned into stone and restore his armor. F shit. Valerie gasped as he said that as he put away his sword again. D I should have assumed. Be careful, Valerie. One wrong step again and you may not survive if Kao Kao decides not to drag this out anymore. Valerie had to listen to what Albion said, he better be careful. What's happening, Valerie? Is that all? Kao Kao sounded a little mocking and disappointed when he said that. Ah, this is nothing. It's just beginning. Valerie stood up and stood at attention, ready for another round. Valerie at high speed goes against Kao Kao again, and both fight again. The girl on this occasion would create ice knives in her hands that she used to attack and block the attacks of Kao Kao, who now became more serious. Dot. Valerie used his speed and great power to deliver an accurate attack that gave him victory, and Kao Kao focused more on technique and waited for the right moment to attack when he sees an opening, or better yet, better creates one. Same dot. It seems that we have come this far, Valerie. Kao Kao would block Valerie's ice knives, and then, one of her orbs was placed in front of her dot, but this ends here. It's a teratana at those words, the orb shined and the light hit Valerie, he didn't do anything to her, but even she knows what he did. We finished this. Valerie in frustration using his ice knives, would attack Kao Kao with several thrusts, along with a combination of kicks, but all of this was dodged or blocked by Kao Kao, so that he would then hit the hacker Yuku with the blunt part of his weapon, to then attack with it for real, and give her a slight cut in the abdomen that opened the armor and really hurt the girl. Valerie held back the urge to scream, and although she had no magic because she was sealed, using the power of her sacred gear, she would launch an attack similar to Issei's dragon shot, only this one was white, at Kao Kao's face, while he grabbed the wounded area. Dot. Kao Kao would dodge that attack and attack again, this time going to Valerie's injured shoulder, but she already sensed it, a weakness of this kind is something that Kao Kao is not going to waste. Valerie would make a risky turn, managing to dodge the spear that only grazed her near the shoulder, and then tried to attack, but, she saw that suddenly, one of Kao Kao's orbs was right in front of her, and the human smiled at that. It's over. Balineaka Ratana. When she said that, the orb hit Valerie and created a strong explosion in the place. The impact of that sent Valerie flying through the streets until he crashed into a building and he stopped. Jigo. Valerie, with great and agonizing pain in his body, vomited a mouthful of blood, and he felt his bones somewhat broken. And her armor was a mess and her helmet was completely destroyed. A single attack from her left her in such a pitiful state, only her wings were still whole. D damn. Hump. It seems that you've come this far, Valerie. The girl would see how Kao Kao would descend from the air, while six of his orbs accompanied him, indicating that he is using the orb that helps him fly. You put up a good fight, but I think it's over. And it won't be. Like that. Valerie would regretfully leave where he was in panting, he would stand in front of Kao Kao, even with his broken armor. If you want me to stop. You will have them kill me. Kao Kao would put on a mischievous smile upon hearing that dot as you wish. That said, the human would quickly make a large number of thrusts with his spear at high speed that cut Valerie's armor, who tried to defend himself against that, but he couldn't, even his magic is sealed, and the cuts only hit him in his arms and legs. By inertia, Valerie would manage to dodge a thrust from the spear and would attack Kao Kao with his sword, but he would block it with his spear and in one movement would send the sword flying that would end up stuck in the ground a few centimeters from both of them. Dot. Valerie couldn't react or do anything since Kao Kao hit her with the back of his spear, then attacked with the tip and hit the girl's leg, who muffled the scream she was going to give and ended up kneeling on the ground. Dot but it didn't end there, since instantly, his legs were turned into stone. B, e, but what? It all ends here, Valerie. The girl would see how Kao Kao had taken some distance from her, while turning the spear around her dot too bad, but just as I said, this would be your last battle. And also, in the end, it is us humans who end up winning. Kao Kao would prepare his spear, and it would shine with a tremendous light sacred dot goodbye Valerie Lucifer. When he said that, the spear would extend, and the tip of it would go against Valerie, who could not do anything and could only watch as the spear went against her, time even slowed down, as if the adrenaline gave speed to her senses, but he had no plan to get away, he couldn't do anything now. I'm sorry to say. I wasn't strong enough. 
Valerie lowered his head while he lamented and mentally asked the brunette for forgiveness. And then, memories of everything she experienced with him when she met him, when they fraud against Loki, would come to her mind, but the memories that I cherish most are those of when he joined her team, she is happy to know that he found his equal. And the love that I never seek. I'm sorry too, Albion. I'm sorry you have such a pathetic carrier. Even when he mentally apologized to his partner, he didn't say anything, there was just silence. Could it be that he didn't respond because he is disappointed in her? Who knows. Even so, Valerie closed his eyes with a small smile, waiting for the end of it, while he also apologized internally to his friends, who hopes they are okay. However. Valerie that scream that sounded through the place, that voice. Time seemed to run normally again, and then. From the sky, a red gust would appear that went towards Valerie, and would take her out of the danger zone. Where in the end, the spear ended up hitting the building behind the girl. And in the air, Valerie with some doubt and fear, would slowly open her eyes and see that she was being carried by someone. It was a red armor with green jewels that the girl recognized, she couldn't believe it. And before she could say something, the boy would take off his helmet and show his face. Are you okay, Valerie? Issei asked that with concern, he never imagined that the girl would end up like this during a fight. I say. Valerie with some doubt while his eyes became crystal clear I are you. Yeah. It's me. I'm sorry for worrying you. Issei said with a sincere smile that made Valerie blush and no longer holding back the emotion, he would cry without holding back. Issei dot Issei dot Issei Valerie crying would hug the boy tightly, not wanting to let him go for anything in the world. P please. Don't leave me again. I don't want to live in a world without you anymore. Of course. The place I belong is at your side with the others. Issei said with a smile and hugged Valerie with affection and caressed his head. I'm surprised that your possessor is still alive, Drake. Oh okay. Many things happened. The two heavenly dragons spoke to each other politely, but happy that everything was fine. So, you're still alive, Haidu is say. Cow Cow's voice made the two dragons come to see him, the brown one being the one who had an upset face. Dot, it's amazing that you survived. They told me that you had died and that your chances of surviving were zero. Yes, I know. Issei landed on the ground with Valerie, who decided to stand at attention next to him. Dot, my body became useless, but it seems that I was lucky that Great Red passed by me by chance. Besides, he helped me by recreating my body with the help of office, and my senpai sacrificed themselves so that I could live. Upon hearing the chestnut tree's explanation, both Cow Cow, Valerie and Albion, were speechless at what they had heard. They couldn't believe it. Issei not only managed to survive Samuel's poison with difficulty, but also the two most vulnerable beings. Powerful of all gave him a new body with the powers of both. The dream and the infinite in the same body. That can certainly be called an abomination, a forbidden existence. I incredible. Cow Cow was undoubtedly amazed, there was no doubt about that. N, not only did you survive in a miraculous way, but you even. You recreated your body with the help of Great Red and Office, and you were reborn. Even meeting Great Red is not something that should be referred to luck. It just shows that the boy's ability to meet legendary beings is unique among many. Albion also sounded amazed, he couldn't believe it either. Haha, I knew from the beginning that with this boy, I can't get bored. But this has exceeded what he expected before, ha 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 ha. Drake sounded amused when speaking, he didn't expect this either, but he still pleased him. You two, without a doubt, are beings that calling them miracles is an understatement. Both dragons paid attention to Cow Cow, who was more serious than before. Valerie Lucifer, who descends from the original Mao Lucifer, plus she is the bearer of the hacker Yuaku. And you, Haidu Issei. The previous ordinary human with no special offspring, and it was quite a coincidence that you were born with a long inus. You first became a demon by dying once, and once you died, you were reborn again, this time with a body that has the power of dream and infinity. You two are undoubtedly rare existences, especially you, Haidu Issei. That's how it is. And that's what makes Issei unique. When they heard that voice, they saw the Tiamat landed on the spot near Issei and Valerie, with office next to him. Dot, even I was speechless when he told me. But what matters is that Issei is still alive. And all thanks to office and Great Red. Yes. Office raised his hand showing the peace sign. Wow, four powerful dragons. Something disadvantageous. Cow Cow would not finish his words because a wave of eerie aura appeared in the place. When everyone saw the source of said eerie aura, they saw something black on a corner of the street. And then, a scythe appeared from that shadow along with a tunic with many ornaments. It was a person wearing a clown mask. Everyone recognized him as a grim reaper, and he was. It's been a while since I met with all of you. Cow Cow sighed. Pluto. Why are you here? This is an order from Hades-sama. He told me that he would capture Office once she appeared no matter the cost. Pluton's eyes moved and fixed her side on Office. Don't think I let you. Issei put her arm in front of Office, putting her behind him. I will be your opponent, Grim Reaper Pluton. 
Tiamat blew her fists as she said that dot our fight was indisposed last time. Wait, Tiamat. I will fight too. Valerie would stand next to Tiamat with her armor already repaired. Dot, I can still continue fighting, so I won't accept being left out. Anyway, I still think I won't be able to beat him so easily on my own, especially because he has that annoying soul-devouring side. Tiamat sweated a little when saying that and seeing that Pluton's side gave off a gloomy air. Oh, so be it. Pluton would turn his side a little and prepare to fight. So that leaves me with the Seker Uite as an opponent, right? Obviously, Cow Cow. I will be the one who defeats you. Issei took a couple of steps forward, facing Cow Cow. Issei. Valerie would approach the brunette who stopped by to see her with doubt, and more so because the girl seemed worried. T be careful. I couldn't bear to lose you again. Don't worry. I will win and survive this, you'll see. Issei said with a confident and serious smile, which made the girl blush. I in that case. Valerie would shake her head a couple of times and say. Let me tell you, his other orb abilities are these. One that allows him to fly, the other allows him to create sentinels like Blade Blacksmith's Balance Breaker. And the last orb focuses on the great destructive power of it. Be careful with that one, it's the strongest of all his abilities, and it was with that one that he left me as he was. I recommend you not receive it. If possible, counter it with your best attack. I see. Thanks Valerie. He also, here. This belongs to you more than anyone else. Valerie would take Ascalon that was pinned to the ground near them and put her in front of the chestnut tree. Azazel, and the first son Wukong, said that when Ascalon interacted with a drop of Samuel's poison that was in your blood when she returned to us, she went through this change that made her stronger. Thank you, seriously. Issei took his sword again, and when he had it in her hands, she saw that she reacted positively towards him, as if indicating that she accepts him as before. The brunette would then keep it in his left gauntlet. Thank me by beating Cow Cow said Valerie with a smile, and then, on impulse and without wanting to lose this opportunity before it was too late, he would give Issei a kiss on the lips to his surprise as well. Then from Tiamat. Office watched this with intrigue, while Cow Cow and Pluton just waited patiently. Exhibitionists. Pluton said without importance. Tiamat just clenched her teeth and fists a little while making a kind of pout, they beat her to it. Issei, a little surprised and somewhat clumsy, responded to that kiss, he never expected this to happen, but this confirms it once again. He loves Valerie without a doubt. Their kiss lasted almost a minute until they separated and stared into each other's eyes. Be for good luck. And and I love you, Issei. Valerie said a little red and embarrassed, but feeling good for finally having said it. I love you too, Valerie. And I will always be by your side. When Issei said that he would take a couple of steps towards Cow Cow until he stopped a certain distance from him, did I make you wait? Not at all. Letting you say goodbye was the least I should do. Now you sounded like a villain, Cow Cow. But that's something you can't see. Issei would be on guard are you ready, Drake? Of course we will face off against the guy who possesses the strongest longinus once again, if you can't beat him here, then you won't be able to call yourself Sekar Uite. That's right as Issei said that, he began to emit a large amount of aura from his body, and the jewels on his armor began to shine, then. I, who is about to awaken. I am the Sekar Uite who holds the real truth high. I will celebrate hope and the indestructible infinite dream. I will walk the path of justice. I will be the Crimson Dragon Emperor. And I will lead you to the path of heaven shining in the true and deep crimson light. Crimson Cardinal Overdrive. The flash of crimson energy was such that it illuminated the entire area. Cow Cow had to admit that the power here at least was admirable, possibly a little greater than Valerie's in terms of power, worthy of admiration. The flash died at the same time that the energy that enveloped the armor was released from it and gave way to the crimson armor of the Sekar Uite. The crimson jade flash along with the golden details of the armor gave a unique air. Now, are you ready for this, Cow Cow? Issei puts himself on guard and emanates Crimson Draconian Aura. I'm always ready for everything. Cow Cow with a defiant smile puts himself on guard and his orbs align next to him. Valerie expels his silver demonic aura and Tiamat expels her blue Draconian Aura as he enters his dragon humanoid form. Pluto just turned his side, emanating a black aura. The strongest dragons had not yet given up, they still had to give their last. Everything for everything and show that false hero what one can really do. Chapter 14. The Crimson Dragon Emperor of Justice. What is a hero? Well, he is someone who inspires despite adversity. Someone who does not give up, someone who manages to overcome challenges even though they are difficult. Also, he is someone who fights every day and does not expect anything in return, he only fights because it is the right thing to do and not because he seeks any personal benefit. That has always been the definition of a hero since ancient times, and although in other places that is varied, that meaning will never change. Silence was what reigned in that place in the Lilith capital that became a battlefield for five powerful individuals. And then. The Sekar attacked the man who, in his words, is just playing at being a hero. 
That he is the descendant of a hero, he didn't make him one. That was the truth, he was just a fake hero. Cao Cao, the human who descends from the famous Cao Cao Meng of the era of the Three Kingdoms and who is the possessor of the true Longinus, the most powerful Longinus of all, saw how his opponent went against him. Issei, using his thrusters, goes towards Cao Cao at high speed and they both begin to fight. Fists against spear, many would say that the result would be more than obvious, but the reality was more than another. Issei collided his fist with Cao Cao's spear and then measured distances and attacked this time with caution from the other. One was much superior in power and the other in technique, so they must do everything calmly to avoid defeat. Issei's blows were blocked by Cao Cao's spear, and the latter attacked whenever he could with the spear. The clashes of both warriors shook the air around them. Issei now had more confidence than before to confront Cao Cao head-on, since if he were still a demon, he would have chosen to fight from a distance so as not to even have to touch that spear with his hands. But the current me of him, he is able to face that holy spear without fear of its power like before. While he knows that with his current body the holy aura of the spear will not be his weakness, he does not take away the fact that that spear has great destructive and terrifying power. Issei attacked with great speed and power, while Cao Cao tried to land an accurate blow to end this fight, but although his attacks managed to penetrate and destroy parts of the Sekiryute's armor, these were to a lesser extent, and the armor was repaired. Cao Cao cursed that internally, since if Issei was still a demon, he would have the advantage like he had against Valerie. Ah never mind. The spear is still capable of eliminating even a god, although his holy aura does not affect the Sekiryute, he still has his own great power to defeat him. Suddenly, Issei would launch a blast of power towards Cao Cao, who used one of his orbs to catch the attack and return it at Issei, who quickly put his hands aside, and upon giving a mental order, his attack that was going against him was deflected. Towards the sky making a turn to return against Cao Cao, who was ready to destroy him, but. Transfer. When that word resonated, a green sphere joined the burst of red energy, and it increased in size, power and speed, going at great speed towards its victim. Cao Cao would quickly and by inertia, manage to destroy that powerful attack with his spear. Which created a big explosion and smoke screen. An opportunity that Issei did not waste and attacked Cao Cao at high speed, where when the brunette came out of the smoke screen and launched a strong blow, Cao Cao managed to barely block said blow with his spear. That clash created a strong air around both of them, so that both of them became involved in another combat of full power against strategy. Valerie and Tiamat stood in front of Pluton who turned his side, and a black aura surrounded him. Tiamat in her dragon humanoid form made her claws extend, and with that she would be able to block the Grim Reaper's side with her large claws. Dot. Valerie would also launch the attack, and by increasing his aura to a great level, he felt that his previously sealed magic returned, and with it, he wrapped his fists in blue rays. Valerie managed to hit Pluton hard in the face, making him retreat, but the girl, with divine speed, managed to get in front of the Grim Reaper and hit him several times. Pluton tried to defend himself from the Hakuyuku's blows, using his scythe to block them. But it was of little use. Added to that Tiamat also went against him and dealt him a strong blow that disconcerted him, followed by another that hit him right in the face, destroying his mask and exposing his bony face. Damn. May these blows be a message for Hades Valerie this time gave him a strong high kick, and what a kick since it sent him crashing into a building, while Tiamat positioned herself next to Valerie, both ready to continue fighting at the same time. See how the Grim Reaper got up and this time a double-bladed scythe appears in his hand. I will harvest the souls of both. Eh, sorry Grim Reaper San. But I can't afford to die, not now that the only dragon I care about is back. And this time. I'm not going to let him. Tiamat, saying that, would launch into the attack again along with Valerie, and both dragons would give their best to finish off that Grim Reaper. Valerie, if you want to finish him off once and for all, I suggest you use what we were practicing on. I know, I just need the exact moment. Valerie knew that if he was going to use that ability to win this, he must do it at the exact moment, because that is a one-time use, and it is very likely that he will lose his silver armor when I used it, but it's worth it. Meanwhile, Issei and Cao Cao's battle was now such that approaching it would be suicide. Red flames along with a crimson jade aura now enveloped Issei, and that allowed him to have more power and speed. Cao Cao was now trying harder than ever and was in a cold sweat, the blows that Issei threw gave him chills, receiving just one of these is enough to knock him out or kill him in the process. Cao Cao would use one of his orbs to disappear and reappear next to Issei, and try to impale him with his spear, but the brunette, by inertia, would manage to dodge said spear by curving his body, and then launch a strong blow towards Cao Cao, who dodged it by the sides. Airs, but the air current created by the blow passed close to his face, and that was enough for him to understand that that blow was serious. At Susuratana, Cao Cao would begin to disappear and reappear around Issei to confuse him and attack at the right moment. 
Cao Cao would then appear in front of Issei, ready to attack him with his spear head on, and the brunette quickly launched a dragon shot towards Cao Cao, who dodged it. Disappearing, and then reappearing behind Issei ready to attack, indicating that the previous thing was a feint. Cao Cao attacked with his spear, but Issei did a somersault turn using his hand as support on the ground, narrowly avoiding the spear that only managed to graze his abdomen, and then launched a powerful kick at Cao Cao, who managed to block said attack. Kick with his spear a second earlier, a second more and he would have hit. Issei pushes himself with his hands on the ground, and with a jump, takes his distance from Cao Cao. Dragon and human would stare at each other with defiance without saying much, their gazes were enough response to know their intentions. With that, both went against each other again and resumed their power vs strategy combat. Meanwhile, on the west side of the Lilith capital. Well, let the Alliance decide what to do with them. Sona watched as Alliance guards who were demons, angels and fallen, took away the defeated members of the hero faction, and they also used special spells to seal the sword Siegfried's demons and take them to the church. The guards took away the barely conscious humans who could not resist, being taken to where they will be condemned while disappearing in a magic circle. It seems that everything is already resolved. Sarah Erg would see on the news how only five of the Bandersnitches were missing and everything was over, and that they also got the news that they managed to defeat the Jaburwiki, and that was good news. There are only five of them left, and we can go home in peace. Sarah Erg would stop his words when he saw the state of the Grimory group, where the girls were sitting with their heads down and crying in silence, what happens now with those creatures they don't care. It doesn't matter, just knowing that Issei died was enough for them to not care anymore. Do you think they will ever recover? Saji asked, approaching Sarah Erg and seeing how Kiba had a gloomy expression, he was upset with himself for some reason. I don't know. But I think I would be the same if my mother died. Sarah Erg said that last bit sadly, he knows that his mother is still alive by a miracle, but as long as she is still in a coma, there is a possibility that she will die if his condition worsens. There he is. Sona would get a little closer to the redeed who didn't stop by to see her. Come on, we have to. The Citri couldn't finish her words because an explosion in the distance caught everyone's attention. Everyone could see how smoke and explosions were seen in the distance, and these explosions were red-green, along with explosions of blue fire. E but what's going on over there? Tsubaki asked in a cold sweat, she doesn't like where this is going. And no one could answer the said question of what was happening, however. Kaneko suddenly had her Nekamata ears perk up as she felt something, a familiar aura. It was a little different, but that essence on her was undoubtedly the same, and he couldn't believe it. Senpai. Kaneko's words caused everyone to look at her with surprise. Issei and Cao Cao's battle was now more active than before, both with their fight had already destroyed many buildings and premises in the area where they were. Issei mentally apologized for the destroyed places, hopefully they will not sue him for destroying property. Dot. The habitat Atana Cao Cao used his sentries as a shield and disappeared, while Issei ended up destroying the sentries with his energy claws, now with added fire. Cao Cao again uses the trick of disappearing and reappearing around Issei to confuse him and try to attack at the right moment, but Issei did not let it be easy for him. The Sekar Yuate now seemed more savage when it came to attacking, he only attacked with his fists that were blocked by Cao Cao, who was trying to find an opening, and even if he found it and used it, Issei did not suffer as much damage, and his armor was repaired. Another maybe the brunette is grateful that by not being a demon, he has more advantage in terms of resistance, and because now he thinks things better. For their part, Valerie and Tiamat were battling frantically against Pluton, who was holding on with great difficulty against both dragons, but his double side was useful as it made both dragons attack carefully, one cut from that thing, and possibly their souls would be harvested, if it's just that it doesn't kill them with the first blow. Tiamat with her huge claws wrapped in blue fire, exchanged blows cuts with Pluton's double side that moved it like a staff and attacked with both sides. Valerie, prepare that I'll keep him when I tell you, use it, Valerie nodded to what Tiamat said as he continued exchanging blows with Pluton's side, while the hacker Yuku prepared her wings that emanated demonic silver aura and shone brightly. Remember Valerie, single use. After that, you will lose the armor, but hopefully you will still be able to keep the balance breaker. Valerie nodded to what Albion said, and if he wants this to go well, he must concentrate all the energy at one point and release a dot. The Amad and Pluton continued with their exchange of attacks, and that caused everything around them to fly, and their attacks seemed to even cut the air. Pluton, by inertia, would spin his double scythe hard and managed to give Tiamat a small cut on her cheek. It was small, but it was bleeding. Tiamat not very happy so she increased his aura to great levels, and that seemed to scare Pluton. You've had me enough Tiamat instantly enveloped her right arm in aura and blue fire and launched herself to attack the Grim Reaper with the best blow of his. Pluton would quickly prepare his scythe and give a strong attack with it at the same time that Tiamat launched his blow wrapped in aura and blue fire, and said arm began to shine. And when their attacks hit each other. 
crack, as the sound of breaking metal echoed, it was revealed that Pluton's side was broken, and that Tiamat had her arm at her side, only it was several times larger, indicating that she only transformed her arm into her original dragon form. And with this he achieved the feat of breaking said side. At ready Valerie. Tiamat without wasting time would give a powerful kick towards Pluton that took him a few meters away, right where the dragon wanted him to be, and. Now, when Pluton recovered from the blow he received, he saw that in front of him was Valerie who extended her hand towards him, and a large amount of demonic silver aura began to concentrate, while his wings spread like never before. The being like you. Deserves to disappear. Being nothing. Valerie would close the palm of his hand, and. Dot compression. Impression divider, impression divider, an improved version of half dimension. Like this one, it divides the targets in half, only instead of doing it once. It does it several times until it disappears from existence completely. Valerie got that idea after getting his silver armor, but feeling his demonic power being consumed was proof that he can't use this technique very often. Pluto's body would begin to compress in length and width, then again in length. And then Pluto's body shrank in half. As something like this. As such power. Pluton screamed as if he couldn't believe what was happening to him. Disappear. Said Valerie without any kind of mercy. But that said, Pluton's body became so small that it could no longer even be seen with the naked eye, and instantly, he ended up disappearing while the air vibrated, the Grim Reaper died. With that, both dragons had defeated his opponent. Valerie would instantly fall to his knees to the ground as her silver armor disappeared, leaving her only with her scale male armor, and the girl was breathing tiredly, he still has to train that technique. Are you okay? Tiamat, now back in her human form, approached Valerie and extended her hand to help her stand, this time he accepts the help. Yes, don't worry. Everything is fine. Valerie sighed deeply and then looked in a certain direction. Only Cow Cow remains. Trust me, I know Issei will win. Tiamat would cross her arms to pay attention to the other fight. The battle between Issei and Cow Cow now was such that approaching it could cause anyone to die. Both opponents clashed fists and spears respectively, creating strong shock waves, they did not even care that the buildings around them collapsed or they will be destroyed. Cao Cao was now trying harder than before and breathing a little hard, and every time he blocked Issei's blows, he felt that his arms were shaking from the force of said blows, and now he was the one who backed away little by little, while well, Issei, this I wasn't even tired. What made the difference in this fight is the resistance. Issei, launching even more strong blows, managed to move Cao Cao a few meters away from him, and then inhaled air, and launched a large red-green flame that seemed lethal. Cao Cao, frowning, quickly attacks the flame with his spear and releases it. A large amount of light from it, where said light eradicated the flames with some difficulty, which Cao Cao noticed. Those flames are not normal, they are something else since they took a little longer than normal to go out. Wow. Cao Cao takes a little deep breath as he tries to catch his breath. Dot, so this is your new power that surpasses the juggernaut drive, huh? But even though it's just like Valerie, that form is incomplete, that doesn't mean it's dangerous. And my attacks can't hit or hurt you. The damage I want. It's because I'm different now than I was before, Cao Cao. Issei sighed a little while he didn't seem tired. In fact, he felt light as a feather. Dot, if I had continued to be a demon, you would probably have defeated me. It would be impossible or not easy for an entity of darkness to defeat an entity of light and vice versa. But my current self is neither of those two cases and you know it. Yes, you're right. But that doesn't mean you'll be able to win. Cao Cao, saying that, began to disappear and reappear around Issei, and this tired sigh of the same strategy. The Habitare Atana Cao Cao's sentinels went on the attack to distract the Seker Yuite, while the human waits for the right moment. Issei would let the sentinels approach him and then. He would jump, letting those beings collide with each other and launch a blast of power that eliminated them, but still in the air. Cao Cao would suddenly appear and try to pierce him. With his spear. Issei by inertia would manage to stop the spear with his hand from the tip, something that surprised Cao Cao and made him remember that the chestnut is no longer an entity of darkness by nature. Take this, you wretch. Issei holding the spear tightly without letting go and without wasting time, would launch a blow towards Cao Cao, who would quickly disappear with one of his orbs along with his weapon, and reappear on the ground. Dot. Shit, that was close. We're not done yet Issei increases his crimson jade aura, and with his thrusters attacks Cao Cao at high speed. Both opponents collide again, and the clash of their fists and spear respectively, caused even more damage to the place where they were. Issei, by increasing his aura even more, makes his thrusters release a sonic boom and disappears at a divine speed, thus beginning to attack Cao Cao from all possible sides with his speed and strength. Cao Cao was now putting in serious effort as he blocked Issei's blows that came from all possible directions as best he could. The brunette was using his own strategy to take advantage. The high-powered blow from Issei, Cao Cao, seeing that Issei was going against him, decided to counterattack, and his orb was already ready, it was time. 
Linnea Akaritana that orb went against Issei who without hesitation, decided to attack that orb, and when his fist and his orb impacted. Ooh, the explosion created was heard throughout the area where they were, and said explosion could be seen and heard in the distance. Aokao would appear a little away from where the explosion originated while he panted a little, this was the first time he had gotten tired in a fight, and he had not yet received a single hit. But that there will undoubtedly be. Hump. Cao Cao would not finish his words because, from the smoke screen, a small red burst would come out at high speed. And before the human could do anything, that gust turned a little in its path at high speed, and when it was close to him, it would hit him right in the face, more specifically in the right eye and my eye. Cao Cao put his hand on his right eye that was destroyed, the same thing happened again when it was Kyoto. Here this ends. The human would see how out of nowhere Issei appeared right in front of him, with his armor somewhat destroyed and without a helmet, but he was still in his body, I only need one hit. Issei would begin to launch strong blows that Cao Cao began to block as best he could with his spear, the lack of one eye gave him little sight, and his arms trembled with each impact. Issei would launch a kick and then an accurate blow towards Cao Cao, that even though I blocked him, he retreated even more tired. Why even with the true longiness I can't beat you. I told you I was going to hit you the Sekiru Yute activated his thrusters and charged at the human. The linear movement of the dragon was enough for Cao Cao, with all the strength he had left in his body, to raise his spear to try to stab the Sekiru Yute's abdomen, but he knew that the Sekiru Yute was going to dodge it one way or another, and that would give him time to step back and think of a plan, but Issei went head on against Cao Cao, who attacked with his spear, hoping to stab him or dodge it, but the brunette did nothing of the sort. And the spear pierced the dragon's abdomen a little to Cao Cao's surprise and Valerie's horror. And Tiamat. Issei smirked at Cao Cao. I told you I would hit you the Sekiru Yute raised his left fist while with his right he prevented Cao Cao from taking out the spear, despite the certain pain he felt odd for having hurt Valerie. Take this as a memory, you son of a bitch, Issei's fist hit Cao Cao right in the abdomen, and the human let out a loud agonizing moan with little blood coming from his mouth. The force of the blow was such that Cao Cao flew backwards with speed and crashed against the wall of a building, while the spear left Issei's abdomen by the same force, staining the floor a little with blood and holding the wounded area to avoid more of the bleeding. Goo. That does hurt, although not as much as before. You're lucky that the armor was very resistant and that your new body is too, since it would have been worse. Issei laughed a little at Drake's comment, how lucky he is. Issei Valerie along with Tiamat as well as Office, approached the tired and injured Sekiru Yute G's, that wound. B, don't worry Valerie. It doesn't hurt as much as before, but it still hurts. I never thought you were the type to do crazy things Issei. Now I feel like I'm attracted to you even more. Tiamat sounded a little dreamy as she said that while she put her hands together like a schoolgirl, which brought an anime style drop to both celestial dragons, while Office watched everything with interest. Ugh, out. Upon hearing those moans, the four dragons would see how Cao Cao tried to stand up, but couldn't, his body was trembling, and where his right eye used to be was bleeding, as if he were crying blood. Cao Cao could only get to his knees as he braces himself with his wobbly spear dot, and I didn't expect. T that. Ugh. Cao Cao would grab his right eye area because he felt great pain w why does it hurt so much. That attack I launched was imbued with the dragon slayer aura of my sword, which carried a bit of sandals. Cao Cao, upon hearing what Issei said, looked at him in surprise, but the next to speak was Valerie. Dot. When we recovered Ascalon, it turns out that a little of Issei's blood infected by Samuel's poison fell on the sword, and that caused Ascalon to change drastically. Ascalon now carries with him a little of the sinister dragon slayer aura of Samuel, but it is not as lethal as the poison itself. Heh, besides that poison, as you said, is lethal to both dragons and snakes. Do you know what that means? Cao Cao put on a surprised expression at what Issei said. Am I Medusa I? Yeah. Medusa is a monster with snake hair, right? So, since you transplanted that eye on yourself, that means that a little of Samuel's gloomy aura is enough to leave you worse than you already are with that hit I gave you. Issei would stand up a little better while Valerie treated his wound with some healing magic, even Office gave her contribution in it. Out. Hahaha. <laughs> Yufufufu. Cao Cao laughed sarcastically at what he heard, although his tone was a little painful. Dot, I never thought it would end like this through a method like that, it almost makes it seem like you planned it all. No, I didn't plan anything. You could rather say that I am somewhat lucky, I miraculously survived thanks to Office and Great Red, and Ascalon went through a change that I never thought would be possible. So I was guided more by luck than by anything planned. Issei sighs as he feels a little better. Dot, even if you are the descendant of a hero and the bearer of the true longiness, you are still a human being. Could a human being like you survive another blow like the one before and another attack with Samuel's aura? I, I don't think so. My body no longer responds to me. And I doubt that the Phoenix Tears can cure me of Samuel. 
Cao Cao raised his face a little with an angry expression funny dot, so the reason I lost was because I am a human being. Haha. <laughs> I, who have been investigating the weaknesses of my opponents. Ended like this. It's the most sarcastic thing. Ever Cao Cao although he laughed at himself, he was not willing to give in dot then, I will use the truth idea. But Cao Cao said cause to say, Valerie and Tiamat to be surprised, he is going to. Cao Cao would raise his spear, and the tip of it would open, and it began to shine, then. Oh spear. The true sacred spear that pierces God. Aspire the ambition of the king of domination that sleeps within me and cross the gap of blessing and destruction. Seeing that immense light coming from the spear, Issei, Valerie and Tiamat put themselves on guard, ready to possibly resist any attack that comes, but. You. Announce your will and become a radiance. But that last verse, the light of the spear grew larger, but. Suddenly, the light of the true Longina slowly began to weaken, and the open tip of the spear would return to normal, as the spear stopped flashing. Emit light. Cao Cao was speechless and shocked when he saw that, as was Issei and the girls who were wondering why nothing happened. I see. So that is his will. Cao Cao made an expression as if he had already gotten the answer from him, after detecting something on the spear from him. Dot, so you have chosen the dream of Sekar Yute instead of my ambition. W why didn't the truth idea work? Valerie asked the question while she was a little calmer. The truth idea is related to the will of the God of the Bible. Said Cao Cao sighing. Dot, the will of God absorbs the ambition of the spear user and responds to the opponent's strength, that is, it creates many effects and miracles. That power can be something with the absolute strength to destroy the opponent. Or a blessing the opponent to capture his heart. But the response that the truth idea gave to the Sekar Yuite was silence. So that means that Haidu Issei has won this fight, and this spear wants to see Haidu Issei's dream for herself. The human's words made Issei surprised. Did the biblical god recognize him as the winner? Listening, Valerie laughs as if this seemed really funny. So the true Longinus chose Issei, and not you Cao Cao, haha. <laughs> this result is so unfortunate that it makes me laugh. And that's why I warned you that time, remember. You should have killed us when you had the chance, and in the end look how it ended. An ending that hardly seems boring. Valerie, it seems that between you and me, Haidu Issei is a fearsome rival. Without a doubt he is the best. Cao Cao smiled weakly. I'm sorry Cao Cao, but he's mine. Valerie hugged Issei's arm with a smile, and the boy didn't react. Dot, I am the only one with the privilege of defeating him. I wanted to defeat him. Enough this is a little weird Issei raised his voice somewhat disgusted, I find it horrible that they fight over me, I prefer women to fight for me, well guys like your cow cow can rot, ha 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 ha. Issei couldn't have said it better. Tiamat laughed gracefully while he held his stomach, in truth he was on the verge of falling to the ground from laughter. But the laughter would be interrupted because out of nowhere, a familiar purple mist appeared in the place along with a person. Cow cow, let's go. Georg. Cow cow was amazed to see that Georg appeared and looked exhausted. He had lost an eye just as he lost his left arm. Plus his left leg was dyed black. Cow cow, we. Made many miscalculations, but we were not wrong. Except. Georg took Cow Cow's hand and created a transportation circle. Dot, we'll end up dead if we get involved with the two heavenly dragons, just like Shalba and the others. You're right, Georg. Cow Cow nodded to his companion as the circle shone, and the fog enveloped them. They will not escape as Say launched himself to stop them along with Valerie, but when they reached where they were, both humans had already disappeared in a slight glow, and the fog dissipated. Shit, they escaped. Valerie sounded a little upset saying that, but side dot it doesn't matter, in the state they are in, it is a fact that they will be out of combat for a long time. Yes, I better take you at your word. Issei sighed while deactivating his crimson armor as well as his scale mail armor, thus feeling slight discomfort in his body. Still, what happened for Georg to end up like this? I don't know, but it was definitely serious. Valerie said without his armor and sighs with relief. I can only think that the Grimory group was responsible, otherwise the others would have also come along with Georg. Yeah. Maybe it was like that. Issei sounded a little sad when saying that. Issei. Valerie would approach the boy and give him a hug to calm him down, which he appreciated and reciprocated with a smile. I'm glad you're really okay. Heh, if it's for you, I'll come back from death as many times as necessary. I will never leave you alone again. Ooh, I'm also happy that you're okay, you know. Tiamat made a kind of pout with displeasure and jealousy that made her look tender. Heh, okay, you can join. Issei extended an arm for Tiamat to join, and she did so without hesitation, even Office joined the group hug hugging Issei from behind on her neck. Valerie, we are done with what we planned. Upon hearing that voice, the four dragons undid their hug, and when they looked in a certain direction, they saw that Arthur was approaching where they were, being accompanied by Biku, Fenrir, Kuroka and Lefei. Dot, we've made quite a ruckus in the underworld of Hades and. 
the blonde Pendragon would not finish speaking since upon seeing a certain person he was left speechless, and the others upon seeing the same thing as him, were also left speechless. In the middle of Valerie and Tiamat, was Issei who looked happy when see the others. Hello guys, I'm sorry for worrying you. Issei greeted with a nervous half-smile. And her response made the others speechless for a moment, until. Sob da de say some I I I lafe, crying like a girl, ran towards the chestnut tree, and when she reached him, she hugged him very tightly, as if not wanting to let him go, while she cried harder than before da de sama. Ise sama. H, he's alive. I I. Ha, a miracle. And I'm sorry for making you cry lafe. Issei caressed the blonde mage's head, which made her happy, and she didn't stop her from crying. Come on, I don't want to see that pretty face of yours with tears, I want to see a smile on it. Lefei letting out a couple of sobs calmed down as best she could and smiled the way she likes Issei. This is better. But she complained when she felt like she was hit and saw that the person responsible for her was Kuroka. Idiot, you. You let us believe that you had died. And that you broke your promise. Kuroka cried with a cute angry expression, while he complained to the brunette. Do not do that again. I am sorry Kuroka. Issei apologized a little embarrassed, but the Nekamata silenced him with a tight hug while he sobbed. It doesn't matter anymore, just don't leave again. I promise. Issei stroked Kuroka's head who seemed to purr a little, how he missed that. Heh, friend, I'm surprised that you're still alive, but I'm also glad to see that you're okay. Biku nudged the brunette who seemed a little upset by that, but smiled anyway. How did you survive Haidu? Arthur asked while adjusting his glasses. It's a long story, but I'll tell you when we're safe somewhere else. Issei said, and suddenly something clicked in her mind. By the way, Valerie, where will we stay now? Don't worry, Issei, I have another secret place to stay on the outskirts of Japan. At least for a few days until we find a better place. Valerie sighed as he said that, since for a moment he forgot that they were now wanted by those left in Cow's Brigade. Well, it's best to go. We shouldn't stay longer than we should. Arthur made the suggestion and everyone nodded in agreement. The Fae, without wasting time, would make a large transportation circle, and everyone would stand on it, so that in seconds, everyone would disappear from the place, leaving the underworld. After a couple of minutes, the but what happened here? Saji looked with admiration at the destroyed place where the fight between Issei and Kao Kao originated, although no one could guess that it was like that. It seems that a big fight broke out here, the question would be. Who caused it? Sarayar looked analytically at the entire area, but could not find any answer. Neko san are you sure you felt Haidu Kun's aura here? Sona asked, seeing the aforementioned that he used his ears and Senjutsu to analyze. And it's gone. Kaneko lowered her ears sadly as she said that. I, I was sure that senpai was here. Neko chan aren't you confused with someone else? Kiba asked him that now he wasn't so encouraged. No, I know that was senpai's presence. It was a little different, but the essence of him is the same. Kaneko replied, affirming what he felt. But he's not there, and you know it. Sona sighed and adjusted her glasses. I think it's better to talk about this with Serzich's Sama and Azazel Sama. Sona would see Riaz and the others for a moment who were depressed again, her hopes of seeing if Issei was really here disappeared. I think it's the best. And if what they told us is true, they have a lot to explain. Tsubaki nodded to what the king said about her, and the rest agreed. In the human world, just on the outskirts of Japan. Issei, Valerie and the others were walking through a somewhat thick forest, and it was already dusk. Well, here it is. Valerie would show the others an average-sized wooden house, it was easily seen to be two stories. And around the house there was a large lake on one side. We will stay here for a few days until we find a better place. If I'm honest, I don't mind this place. Issei whistled in admiration at the happy house where they would stay, the good thing is that they won't sleep in the forest. Me, nee, it reminds me a little of my burrow in the forest of the familiars, but this is more modern. Tiamat expressed a slight interest in him for this place. Well, if we are going to live in a house in the forest like the ancient people, we will all have to do our part. No one will be lazy. Arthur's words made Biku and Kuroka pale, since they were the weakest of the group, although the Nekamata was weaker. I will take out our things to put them in the house. Lefei would create a large magic circle from which several suitcases with her belongings came out Can anyone help me? Let me help you. Issei went and took one of the suitcases to head to the house. The others with a sigh and a smile, went to get their things to enter where their temporary home would be, for now things will be calm. Well, everything seems in order. Grafia saw how the evacuations were completed and everyone was calm, finally everything was over. Grafia sama The aforementioned, upon hearing that voice, would see that those who arrived at the place were the Gremory and Citri groups, along with Sarayarg, and his pawn. Everything is already done, we did it. Yes, it's all over. Grafia sighed with a small smile, what long and stressful days. But she would notice the depressed looks of Ria's and the others. Oju-sama, what's wrong? 
Even when I asked that, none of the girls wanted to talk, they just continued the same, but. Brafia sama, what happens is that. Sona decided to speak while she sighed and began to tell everything they found out from the hero faction and so on. Are you sure that what they said is true? Grafia's unsurprised question made all the young people look at her with some doubt. I would like to believe that they lied, but they stated that he did die. Since, Issei Khan was never here in the underworld fighting. Kiba said lowering his head and clenching his fist. Do you think so? What Grafia said made everyone look at her again, and before they could speak, she continued. If you believe that, look at this. The maid would create a magic circle that created a holographic vision. This is from when we defeated the Jaburwiki. Everyone would pay attention to the holographic vision and see how the Lucifer group could only hold back the advance of that beast, and within minutes Tiamat arrived and joined them in the fight against the Jaburwiki. Seeing that surprised everyone, but they still decided to continue watching. And as the minutes passed, everyone would see how in the holographic vision the Great Red appeared to everyone's surprise and defeated the Jaburwiki with one attack. At the end, see how a person descends from the Great Red Dragon, and everyone recognized the Sekiryute armor, and when he took off the helmet, everyone could see Issei's face, and that surprised everyone without exception. I say. Rhea sounded shocked and she couldn't formulate words, she couldn't believe it. B but how? We don't know much. Grafia interrupted Kiba's words, and everyone came to see her. We only know that Issei Sen suddenly appeared on the battlefield, and then went somewhere else with Tiamat, but we don't know where. The place where a certain fight originated. Sona's words made everyone come to see her. This is all very confusing. First, we find out that Haidu Kun died from the deadliest poison of all, and the next, we find out that he was here fighting and already. It doesn't make sense. But the place where a certain fight broke out in the Lilith capital. Could it be that Haidu Kun fought someone there? Everyone started thinking about what Sona said, trying to find an answer or a mystery, but nothing. I suggest that if we want answers, we should talk to Serzich's Sama and Azazel Sama. Everyone nodded to what Kiba said, maybe they do have an idea. The Grimory group and others began to see the holographic vision again where Issei was reflected, just knowing that he was still alive relieved them. And that maybe they can still fix things. The tension had calmed down when Azazel and Serzich's received the news that the Alliance was able to defeat the Bandersniches and the Jaburwiki. Serzich's made his power of destruction disappear when he learned of their victory and returned to his form. Usual. Although the news that made both leaders most happy was knowing that Issei returned and was alive, and that together with Great Red he defeated the Jaburwiki, but from there they do not know his whereabouts now, he disappeared the instant he appeared. Hades-sama, most of the Grim Reapers in the sanctuary. Have been frozen. A Grim Reaper reported to the skeleton god who stopped by to see both leaders. Did the Joker do this? Hades's eyes lit up in a dangerous color. Julio ended up sighing and massaging his shoulders. Well, I would be scolded by Archangel Michael if I didn't at least do this. I was thinking about freezing any suspicious Mr. Grim Reaper. But I didn't want to bother, so I froze most of them in the sanctuary. Sorry, I have bad habits, anyway, amen. Azazel had to admit that Dulio had a strange personality and had distant words, but he is definitely strong. Dulio, Heaven's trump card has a bad mouth, but the power of it is overwhelming. It's crazy that he froze the Grim Reapers in the sanctuary. Zenith Tempest, a top-level Longinus that can control the world's weather and any type of attributes. The way he uses it, he is able to be in control in appropriate situations. Well, without a doubt we have already asked a lot about the incident with Samuel, right? Azazel spoke naturally towards Hades who seemed upset, although he could not distinguish it, since he could not express himself. Since we managed to capture the main members of the hero faction alive, we will be able to interrogate them personally. Hades don't know, let's say goodbye here. I am very sorry for our sudden visit. Serzich's spoke before they left. But I'll still tell you this, there won't be a next time. Next time, I'm going to eliminate you. Azazel warned the Greek god who didn't seem phased. Hades only laughs when he hears that dot fafafafafafa showing me good eyes. Yes, I remember it very well. Serzich's and Azazel decided to leave that place once and for all, they did not want to stay longer than normal. When both leaders and his escort arrived at the door that connects the Greek underworld with their own, Azazel received an unexpected call from a communication circle. Yes. Azazel answered the call and was surprised by who called him. Valerie, huh? Serzich has stopped by to see Azazel upon hearing what he said. I see. It's okay, don't worry. I think I have a place for you. Yes. Oh, is he with you? I'm glad. Well, I'll just say take care of him until then, okay. Well. Azazel would hang up the call with a sigh. What did Valerie Lucifer want? He asked me if he could get him some isolated housing in the human world. Azazel scratched his head complicated. She and her group are wanted for treason by what's left of the cow's brigade, so they can't return to her old base. Plus Issei, Tiamat and Office are with her. 
I see, so he won't come back, huh? Serzichas sounded a little sad as he said that, now he wondered how to tell the others. Don't be depressed Serzichas. It also doesn't mean that we won't see him again. Azizel would lightly pat Serzichas on the back. Valerie and his team are still wanted by the Alliance, so I'm not surprised that they still want to isolate themselves, but it's better to support them for what they've done. Also, I think it's necessary for Issei to stay with them for a while, until Kan finally confront Riaz and the others. Something tells me that she is not yet in a condition to return, for now. I guess you're right. Serzichas sighed and shook his head. Azizel, do you think that if Riaz hadn't made Issei Kun leave, all of this would still have happened? I wouldn't know how to answer that question, but something tells me that maybe if the same thing had happened, just in another sense. Azizel scratched his cheek while he thought. Well, we just have to hope that everything goes well and that things are resolved. Azizel agreed with what Serzichas said, for now they will be calm, since the hero faction and the old mass have already been completely overthrown. You look pathetic cow cow. Indra, also known as Sakra and the god of war of Hindu mythology, sounded mocking while in front of him were a battered cow cow and Georg, while Leonardo only had a headache. Well, if it's not the god Sakra. I never thought that you would come to this world. Cow Cow was kneeling and still somewhat exhausted as he leans on his spear. You prepared a lot but caused the hero faction's plans to fail due to betrayal. Or was it due to something unexpected? Even three first level Longinus were defeated. Cow Cow did not respond to what Indra said. Georg, Leonardo, and you can't stay active, right? So what will you do? I'm going to rebuild everything. A new office is going to be born, so I am going to create a new cow's brigade using this created being as the leader of this new cow's brigade. Cow Cow said dot, but because of this event, we have lost many powerful members. I will have to hide for a while. Do you really believe that? Your face now doesn't say that. Your face is that of someone whose soul is defeated. What Indra said made Cow Cow stare dot, you received a heavy blow from the two heavenly dragons, right? Even if you heal, the effect of Samuel's aura will still persist for a while, you know. Be thankful it wasn't Samuel's poison itself, but still, you ended up like this because you're a human being. Being defeated by the two heavenly dragons, huh? I'm not going to deny it. Are you sure you look pathetic? So what do you want to be? A hero? A feared hero? Or perhaps a villain? Nowhere will you get greedy and want to be all of them. For me, who was born as the descendant of a hero and at the same time I am the possessor of the true longinus, that path is the only one available to me. The only option I had was to fight against superior beings. Ha 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 you bucking brat listening to God's words is not so pleasant. Okay then. People like you, who usually have class B powers, but have class S when they get serious, there are a lot of people like that. The problem is the crazy people who have class B powers in normal times, and when they are angry they are triple S class when they need them to finish. These guys are the most problematic. That was a battle that you could have undoubtedly won, but it was reversed by things unknown. You knew that, didn't you? Yes, that's the kind of person that Sekiryute is. If you want to win against beings like Sekiryute, then you will have to have enough power to show that you can change destiny yourself. After all, your fellow Longinus holders are the Sekiryute and the Hacker Yuaku. Maybe you were born in the wrong era. The next. Next. Ha 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 ha. There will be no next time. It ends here. You know better than anyone that you are worthless after being rejected by the spear and having received so much damage that you cannot move properly until you recover. What are you going to do with me? Not much. I will send you to the kingdom of the dead along with Georg and Leonardo. Hades is really angry right now, so you guys can cheer him up. They can wait for the spiderweb to go down there. But I'll take all of his longinus. For me, taking you in the balance breaker state will surely make me so happy that tears will come out of my eyes. Yes, you are a terrible god. Who were the ones who tried to control me and the other gods from the shadows? Well, you basically just received your punishment. I will return your holy spear to you again if you can return from the realm of the dead. Since you are a hero, you should be able to do such things. After all, Sekiryute did something similar you know. Chapter 15 New Life and Night Masters On one morning, a couple of weeks after the monster crisis in the underworld. In a wooden house that was hidden in the mountains and in a certain room of that house. Issei slowly opened his eyes with some laziness, and when he finally opened them and decided to analyze his current situation, he found the unimaginable sight of four beautiful girls sleeping in his bed. And looking to the side of the bed, he could see his now girlfriend, Valerie Lucifer, lying next to him and using her right arm as a pillow, while she continued to sleep with a quiet smile, which made the boy smile. And on his left side was Tiamat, who did the same as Valerie with Issei's other arm while he was still sleeping. And on top of Issei's chest, he could see Kuroka sleeping peacefully while purring whenever he could. And finally, near the edge on the left side of the bed, there was also Afa sleeping as he floated in the air and had his arms folded as if he were a dead man. 
seeing the situation he was in made the chestnut tree feel that the situation went from improbable to impossible. Impossible but true. It was supposed that only Assay and Valerie slept together in that room, something that was decided from the day they moved into this house, and they both began their relationship, but lately, every time he woke up he always found Kuroka, Tiamat and Office in the place, also sleeping next to him. Which made him nervous at first and more so because there were certain arguments between Valerie, Kuroka and Tiamat, in the end, this became a habit for the pair of celestial dragons, although they rarely woke up with the two of them being the only ones in the room, sometimes also with Office sleeping with them. But office there was no complaining at all, since they started living in this house in the mountains, the dragon god began to be curious and interested in certain things that others did, she even imitated them, but most of the time she spent following Issei. She certainly seems like a little girl who is curious about everything. Smiling a little appreciatively and amused by the situation, Issei withdraws his left arm as best he can without waking Valerie, uses his hand and lightly caresses Kuroka's head, drawing a few purrs from him. And to his surprise, Kuroka began to wake up, his sleepy eyes staring at him a little confused before smiling, closing his eyes and curling his head against his chest. Ni, nee, good morning Issei Naya, did you sleep well? Sighing with a smile, Issei put his hand on the back of the girl who blushed at that, and in a whisper he would say, Dot, always get a good night's sleep. In fact, even better than before. Naya, I'm glad. Still. Kuroka whispered, gently moving his back, signaling to the brunette that he had to rub his sleeping yukata. Issei used to not be able to capture what Kuroka always asked for with just movements, actions or signs, but lately, he has become accustomed to the fact that he captures them as best he can. And without missing the signal, Issei waved his hand to do exactly what Kuroka asked, immediately receiving approval in the form of a silent purr. Kuroka closed his eyes to better enjoy the feeling of Issei's touch. That made her feel good like never before, it even made her feel a little nostalgic. Of course, for the Nekamata the brunette was a friend and groupmate who likes to make jokes as if they were tempting him, but sometimes she can't help but think that she sees him as something more, but she was unable or could not understand well that feeling that was being born in her. I just knew and felt that I wanted to be as close to Issei as possible. But after a couple of minutes, Issei heard a faint rustling sound beside her, and seeing that it was Valerie who had woken up and looked tenderly confused for a moment before smiling and saying. Good morning Issei. Also, good morning Kuroka. Kuroka just smiled. I say the same, Valerie Naya. Anyway, I think I'll give you your moment. Kuroka with some delicacy gets out of bed as best she can, not wanting to wake Tiamat. Issei on his side with a smile turned to look at Valerie, the girl's beautiful sky blue eyes always captivated and hypnotized Issei. And Valerie was also sometimes captivated by Issei's almost yellow brown eyes, she felt like she saw a beautiful sunset in them. Did you sleep well, Valerie? Moving a little closer to her boyfriend, Valerie looks at him with dreamy eyes and says dot yes, thanks to you. I have to admit that I used to consider waking up like this to be a bit weird, but not uncomfortable. In fact, I've gotten used to it. Eh, it's definitely something to get used to. At home, however, she always slept with Rias and Asia, and rarely did the others join in as well. Unconsciously I was nervous and scared about it, I didn't even feel like I could sleep. But now. With you, I can sleep like this with total peace. Those honest words, combined with a grateful look, had the desired effect, leaving a blush on Valerie's embarrassed face. And not wanting to wait another second, she stared at her boyfriend, whispering dot Issei. Without losing the clear indication that he needed more than his gaze, Issei gently drew Valerie to him, and as they were both close enough to each other, closing their eyes, they would both give each other a tender kiss. Leaning back, this time it was Issei who couldn't stop smiling as he parted ways with Valerie, the kiss they shared leaving Valerie almost breathless. And noticing Issei's smile, the blush intensified on Valerie's cheeks as he hid his face in Issei's shoulder out of embarrassment. Be stop looking at me like that. This is embarrassing. I am sorry. The thing is, no matter how many times I see you, to me you're really beautiful no matter what you look like. Issei said, blushing, with an embarrassed smile. Those words captivated Valerie, who tried to hide his face deep in the brunette's shoulder as he muttered. Idiot. I love you too, Valerie. Issei's sweet words only kept causing the now embarrassed girl to want the earth to swallow her. Ever since the battle in the underworld and the two of them starting their relationship, Valerie had become more shy and easy to embarrass only when she was with Issei or talked about him with the others. Ooh um. Why are they so noisy this morning? Asked a voice from Issei's left, who the expression of the newly awakened Tiamat. We're just talking about this strange situation. Strange but not uncomfortable. Issei said with a half smile and a twinkle in his eyes that made Tiamat blush, causing his heart to beat like it had never before. Talk talk someone was knocking on the door and then. The Edo, Issei Sama, Valerie San. Le Fay had cautiously entered the room, hoping not to awaken those she was looking for. But when he walked in and saw the situation in the room, his face quickly blushed. The Edo. 
I'm sorry to interrupt you Olafe would quickly leave the room for another part of the house. Issei, Valerie, Tiamat and Kuroka, who had already finished changing, didn't understand why Lafayre ran away like that. But then, when they took a look at how Issei, Valerie and Tiamat were in bed, they were in a rather compromising position, which would make anyone misunderstand the fact that they had either done something or were about to do something. Realizing what Lafay had possibly thought, Issei and Valerie blushed slightly, while Tiamat just took all this as something funny and Kuroka for some reason thought of unholy things with a chestnut. Issei finally sighed with a smile. I guess it's the start of a new day. Issei would then sit on his bed and before standing up, he kissed Valerie's forehead who blushed at that gesture, while Tiamat and Kuroka had some jealousy seeing that, internally they wanted equal treatment to that. Things were certainly going great and normal for Valerie's new team. However, it wasn't all happiness for everyone. At Kuo Academy, the school period was the same as every day. But ordinary students aside, certain supernatural beings in such a school were not in the best spirits. In the first, second and third year classrooms, the atmosphere was somewhat heavy and sad for the young demons. In first year, things were normal for the students, but the important point was another. Gaspar unlike the past times, looked a little better than before when he had a gloomy expression, he seemed to have an expression of understanding now, and as if wishing someone good luck. Hineko wasn't any better, she's more somber and expressionless than before as she looked at her hands in her lap, which trembled very slightly. Ravel, although he no longer had a face as if he wanted to cry, now every time he casually saw Kaneko, he would frown as if remembering something, and then turn his head so as not to look at the Nekamata. In year two, things were the same in this year as in year one, but the real point is another. For the trio of the church now seemed more depressed than before. And all the other students had noticed how the teachers always called the attention of the three of them, but they rarely ignored them, which caused them to have one or another problem. Hiba and Tusi had a gloomy expression of regret and self-loathing, causing his heir as a handsome prince of the academy to turn into that of a shadow prince. Something that was noticed by Saji and some of the Citri girls in Kiba's living room as they had faces between disappointment and understanding. In third year, as in the previous two. Akeno this time no longer had her hair tied in a ponytail, she now had it loose, and her eyes were down with a somber expression. If it weren't for the fact that she had that depressing expression on her face, many students would say that the Himijima looked even more beautiful than before because she had her hair down, but seeing that expression on her face made them shut up and not know what to think. Ria's was another story as now, without anyone or maybe some noticing, the girl had her gaze on her desk, looking at a single piece of pawn from those that once belonged to Issei, and the expression on her face only said one thing, what he said that night and what happened after that, is something that will never be renewed, what has been done is done, and there is no going back. So only when she saw how Ria's and Akeno were only sighed with disappointment, it seems that even after the above, they do not fully see the weight of their actions and what they caused. And it was a couple of weeks ago when they were finally informed of everything they wanted to know about Issei. Flashback, that same day when the battle in the underworld against the creatures of Annihilation Maker ended, everyone was finally reunited with Serzichas and Azazel who returned from the Greek underworld in the castle of Serzichas. All the young men of the Gremory clan were present, as well as the Citri, Irina, Ravel, Serer, and Grafia. Azazel revealed to everyone about what happened to Issei. He told them everything Valerie had told him, stating that although things were hard, the best thing at the time was for Issei to go with Valerie, which was not taken almost as well. And also what actually happened with Office and the hero faction. Azazel even claimed that Valerie never wanted to drag Issei into his troubles, as he even told him that he should not participate, but he accepted it as such, all in order to help Office. He also recounted how they confronted Cao Cao and his people and couldn't help themselves, facts that everyone knew thanks to the captured members of the hero faction. At the end, Azazel tells the reason for Issei's return, which Valerie informed him after the incident, where he revealed that thanks to Office, Issei was able to return reborn with a new body made with the blood and powers of Great Red and Office. Issei that they were all astonished to learn that fact is an understatement, they were literally shocked to the extreme, as Issei was now in existence that would be considered forbidden. And with that, Azazel revealed the latest that Issei defeated Cao Cao in the end, and that now Issei along with Valerie and his team along with Office and Tiamat, moved to another place to live in an unknown area even for them. There were complaints and even claims from the Gremory group who wanted to go and talk to Issei to fix the misunderstanding, but Serzichas told them to shut up so that in the end, Azazel would sigh while rubbing his temple and give his last news. With all this, we have decided that it is best for Issei to stay with Valerie until he is fit to return. He but. Rias, we've already decided. Serzichas spoke, who was more serious than usual. We're not saying that Issei Kun will never come back, just that he won't be able to now, it's the best thing for him. And with that, I want all of you to reflect on the weight of your actions, especially your Rias. Azazel was even more serious and looked at the Gremory group of which he was previously so proud with disappointment and even some anger. Q. 
keep in mind that what you said that Nighty disappeared was the cause of all of this. So think about this, if you hadn't told Issa what you told him that night and confessed to him as it should have been, how would things have happened? Azazel's words made everyone speechless, especially Riaz who was trembling with panic. I agree with Azazel, Riaz. Serzich spoke now, who had a disappointed face, and seeing that his sister wanted to object, he quickly spoke again. And I don't want you to go around saying things about this all being Valerie Lucifer's fault. And while it's true, she's partly to blame, you're even more to blame, Riaz. Those words only caused guilt and frustration to invade the redeed. That's right, because what Valerie did was a very noble act, even though it was too high a price. Practically, Valerie did what none of you did or should have done, give his say emotional support and help him overcome his fears. And instead, they just blamed him for their relationship not moving forward and look what that caused. Azizel would then go on to see the rest of the Gremory group. Leaving aside Roswis who wasn't involved or aware of the matter, the rest of you are also partly to blame for what happened, including Arena. So think very carefully about what your actions caused. With that, this would be the whole briefing of what actually happened. This information is known only to you along with us, even Michael, Aden and Yusaka are informed of what happened. With nothing more to say, everyone can retire. I speak for the last time Serzich's seriously, closing Issei's case once and for all. And to flash back, after that, things didn't go well as the days went by, although that same day a lot of things happened that only worsened the situation and reputation of the Gremory group. That same day, when Ravel found out about the affair, he retorted to everyone about what they did, and even, to everyone's surprise, Ravel gave Riaz a slap loaded with fire, a proof of his anger and the now contempt he has for everyone. In fact, at the end of that day, since Ravel didn't want to leave school and had hopes that Issei would return, he decided that until then he would live on his own in his own apartment that he bought in the city, he didn't want to stay in the same house with those who hurt the person he admired the most, and that because of what they did, the dream he planned for when Issei was a high-class demon had vanished. From that very day Serayard became distant with Riaz and his group, he no longer bothered to call them as before when they did not know the real thing. Sona could only be disappointed in her lifelong friend. Even Tsubaki didn't see Kiba in a good way anymore, he was supposed to be Issei's most trusted friend and that he would be there to help him, but in the end I put him aside, she couldn't be more disappointed in someone who abandons his friends, let alone try to help him understand what was really going on. Saji obviously didn't take it nearly as well, if he used to see the Gremories as an admirable group and with respect and sometimes with a yearning to have the most beautiful girls in it. For now all that I felt for them was completely lost. In fact, he was tempted for a moment to want to burn Kiba with his black flames and curse him, but in the end he had to be forcibly calmed down by Sona and her other companions. In the end, the looks of contempt he sometimes gave them when he saw them by chance were proof of his anger. Even the other girls in Citri didn't see the Gremories in a good way anymore, they could only feel disappointment when they saw them. They knew that Issei didn't deserve what happened, now they see that even he was so much more than the hopeless pervert they once believed him to be. Asper wasn't nearly as affected by what happened, as he didn't know whether to agree with Issei Arias at the time, but in the end things were normal for him without any resentment from others. Now he could only feel a little disappointed in the group he was in, and always wished his favorite senpai luck in his new life, and that he will come back soon. Arena from that day on was almost not the same as always, in fact, she stayed locked in her room for a couple of days, she didn't even want to talk to anyone, not even with Asia and Zenobia, where there seems to be distance and a certain tension with the trio of the church. Sona would sigh at the memory of all that, as things certainly didn't go smoothly for her friend and her entourage. And seeing how Rias rubbed the cheek where Ravel had slapped her was proof that what happened that day still hurts. In the end, the other thing that was decided that day is that since they didn't have so many options left on how to hide from Issei's parents that he had disappeared, they decided to send them on a vacation trip until then. It seems that continuing to take care of Issei's parents is what they can now do while he is away. Because abandoning them would mean that perhaps Issei will get upset and think badly of all of them, even those who did nothing to him. So I dot keep in mind that your bad decisions always have consequences, Riaz. So face them and accept them. You lost Haidu, maybe forever, just like the others. Sona spoke in a low voice as she looked out the living room window, also wishing Issei good luck in his new life, he deserves it without a doubt. It was already the afternoon of that same day. In the wooded area a little way from where Issei and his new team were staying, there were several trees cut down as if they had been cut down. Also, you could hear the sound of something hitting metal, and then. From the trees, an Issei would emerge wearing his own training suit while well, he had the boosted gear summoned, and with both hands he held Ascalon firmly and in a good position. It was at that moment someone at high speed would come out of the trees and attack Issei, who upon seeing his attacker swung his sword with precision and force, thus clashing his weapon against that of his attacker, who turned out to be Arthur with his sword Colyburn. 
Ever since the Battle of the Underworld, Valerie's new team knew that they wouldn't be at peace for long, as the Cow's Brigade is still active and they're wanted for treason. While the Old Mass and the Hero faction have already been totally overthrown by the fall of their leaders, there are still followers in those groups who have taken over and carried on with their own thing. Obviously there is also the group of street mages who, as far as they know, their leader is a Longinus possessor not yet confirmed. All of that is reason enough for the group to start training and getting stronger than before. Thanks to the daily training sessions with his teammates, Issei felt a great improvement, but he is still learning. Biku would teach him new moves for hand-to-hand -hand combat or even teach him more about combat with weapons other than swords. Arthur taught Issei the best stances for sword combat so that he could have good balance and technique. I even teach him how to use Ascalon's or even better and teach him a secret among legendary sword holders. Which is that your weapon also responds to your emotions, the stronger these are, the stronger the power of the weapon will be, where even a holy sword that is weaker than another can be at the level of the superior one or even surpass it. Sure, there's still more to teach him about that, but he uses it very well. The Fae taught him the best she could about magic, where the elements most compatible with Issei are fire and wind, thanks to her 100% dragon traits on her body, although both elements were used in a different way than normal magic, but she used them in an incredible way. But whether he can learn another magic is not yet known. Hiroko offered to teach both Issei and Valerie some senjutsu so they could become stronger, which they both accepted. But even today, they are still in the training stage. Tiamat taught Issei how to use his draconic powers even more, even days ago they discovered that Issei could dragonify his body, causing his arms to grow dragon scales that act as a reinforcement. According to Tiamat, they could take advantage of that to further use their dragon power, now that he carries the blood and powers of Great Red and Office. Although according to Office herself, Issei still has a way to go to even be able to use both her powers and those of Great Red that lie in his being, but he still decided to give his contribution to train Issei. Office knew that he had an even bigger evolution within his reach, but he will have to investigate it well, staying by his side all the time. Issei and Arthur continued their sword training by exchanging several sword blows. The brunette eventually got used to it very well to the point that it could hold up almost without problems against the blonde Pendragon. Issei had Ascalon unbelievably unleash his now sinister dragon slayer aura with a bit of the sacred nature he still has left. Even with that, Ascalon didn't lose so easily to Colyburn, as long as Issei used his aura very well. Arthur somersaults backwards, then concentrates the aura of his sword and fires several sharp blasts at Issei, who with the best he had decided to counterattack those attacks. With several quick slashes with his sword, Issei got rid of Arthur's initial attack, and he smiled under his breath at that. He then went against the chestnut with the intention of hitting it with his sword, Issei noticed that and as best he could, he counterattacked with an ascending slash. Both swords of both users collided with each other, and the energy of both was thrown out. Just by looking at each other's faces, they nodded in agreement on something, in order to stop the struggle of their weapons and pause the training until then. Not bad, Haidu Kun. You've improved a lot in just two weeks. Arthur gave a half smile as he adjusted his glasses. Now that you've learned how to best use the power of your sword in order to bring out its full potential, there is almost as much that I can continue to teach you, other than that you must improve your technique and dexterity. Even if you're no longer 100% human, accepting the nature of the human you once were will help you get better at sword art. I understand, I'll do my best. Issei smiled gratefully as he put his sword away in the boosted gear. So that they both decided to go back to the others who are in the house. And as they walked, Arthur remembered something and decided to bring it up. By the way, Haidu Kun, how is the dragon Welsh, Drake? Issei sighed. Well. Sometimes he talks to me to see how I'm doing, so that I can go back to sleep later. Lately he has extended the time he needs to sleep since the battle with Cao Cao. There were even times when he didn't respond for a whole day. Issei just remembered what happened the same day they arrived at their new home, he still didn't get used to it. Flashback, when Issei and Valerie's team along with Tiamat and Office arrived at their new home in the mountains, on the night of the full moon, Drag informed him of a certain matter. As partner, it was a good fight. That you have won not only with your power, but also with your own intelligence. You've yet to perfect the power of the crimson armor, but... Still, it was a good fight. Hump. What's wrong with you all of a sudden? Issei asked doubtfully, as I swear Drake's voice was a little choppy. You seem a little out of energy. No. Well. I think I've used too much power to revive your body. I'm going to lose my consciousness very soon. Issei just hearing what Drake said got a little alarmed, he didn't like where this was going and don't worry. I'll make sure you can use the boosted gear, even without my. That's why I'm glad I was able to see a good fight. In the end. Greg's voice began to become even more isolated, and his voice is becoming small and weak. Be wait. I still can't do anything without you, I know you can. You have. To your. New comrades. I. Am. Already. 
you don't need me. Drake spoke in a broken voice and a very low tone. No, you're wrong I will still and always need you you are my partner, let's be together forever together we are Sekiruite, we've done a lot of things together. Issei screamed a little upset as the memories he had with Drake came to his mind, just like he doesn't allow wanting to cry. My partner, Issei. Thank you. It was a lot of fun. Be Drake. Hey. Answer. Hey. Partner. Issei spoke a little upset as he slapped the gem in his glove several times, but nothing. Idiot it's not fair that you call me by my name only at the end that's not fair I beg you call me Issei again. This is not. While he was saying that, a sound came to his ears. Gugu. Gugu. Yue snoring. Just hearing that, Issei now wondered if he was actually sleeping. Drag was too exhausted because he used maybe a lot of his power in the dimensional rift to sustain your soul. The one who said that while touching the boy's gauntlet was Office. She apparently approached him without him feeling her coming. So he'll be sleeping for a while to recharge his batteries. The A. Office nodded to Issei's question, who within seconds became sentimental and began to reproach him, Drag, you're an idiot. You made me worry so much Issei yelled at his sleeping companion as he hugged his gauntlet and comical tears flowed. That was really a relief, as it would have been horrible if this had actually been a goodbye. After a few minutes of continuing to reproach his companion for having scared him to death, Issei sighed more calmly as he saw the full moon in the beautiful night sky. Then I pass by to see Office, whose hair vibrated in the wind, making the brunette think that his hair is as black as the night itself, and that in the moonlight, it is shiny. Office. The aforementioned one went on to see Issei still with his expressionless face. We will be your family. And being with us, you will feel at home. I want to keep Issei, Valerie and the rest. They're my home, my family. Office smiled adorably. Yes, after all, she is not the leader of the terrorists. She's just a powerful lone dragon. End of flashback. Just remembering that day made Issei smile bitterly every time he remembered it, he was certainly stupid for believing that his partner would leave. In fact, now that he's reminiscing about the past, he was now wondering. How will things be at the academy? And now that you remember that, shouldn't you have taken your mid-semester exams? Oh, no. Issei just remembered that and turned pale and almost fell into despair. Should he didn't count on the fact that now that he's out, his academy tests are postponed oh, no, no. Alright, alright. You need to calm down a bit. Now it's agreed that Valerie keeps in touch with Azazel, and something tells them that they won't have to hide for long. Maybe soon they'll all be forgiven by the Alliance, and they'll be able to fight alongside them as allies, as well as be able to go back to their daily lives. And speaking of everyday life, she now wonders. How will her parents be? Either way, something tells him they're okay. But he knows that even if they are forgiven and everyone is cleansed of their past actions, Issei must still confront his old comrades, something that won't be easy. But every time he thought about that, he started thinking about everything that might happen and what he should say when the time comes. He will have to make a few things clear, as he knows that while they are to blame for not supporting him, he is also partly to blame for letting Raynor rule him for so long and for being an egotist back then. In fact, it seems like you already know what to say if that time comes. Are you okay, Haidu-kun? Asked Arthur, who had seen how the chestnut changed his expressions between bitterness, panic and seriousness, it seems that he had several memories apart from Drake's. Yes, I'm fine. Just remembering. Issei said with a nervous laugh and a drop on the back of his neck. Late at night, the next day. The meeting was taking place at the occult club, at which the Gremory and Citri groups were present, along with Irina and Ravel. There was a certain tension in the room due to the differences they now had with each other. The reason for this meeting? Simple. Some time ago they received a notification from the vampires that they wanted to talk to them, an event that surprised the alliance, since the vampires were always the most neutral with them and never accepted any of their invitations to an alliance, so they do not know how to deal with this matter. As if it was a good opportunity to make peace with the vampires or take it as something I suspect they decided to talk to them now. I'm sorry for the small delay, we even have a visitor that I had to look for. Azazel would enter the room so that later, his companion would also enter. She was a beautiful woman who looks like she is from Northern Europe, wearing a nun's dress with a veil that covered her face. He even looked like he was in his twenties and has a soft smile with a gentle vibe. The nun looks at everyone and I greet them. Hi everyone, let me introduce myself. My name is Griselda Quarta and I supervise the Heaven staff in this region. The nun identified as Griselda would give a slight bow and then set her sights on a certain angel. Hi Irina, how long? Ah, yes. I'm also glad to see you, Griselda San. Irina greeted without much encouragement, which was noticed by Griselda herself who raised an eyebrow in doubt, but then set her sights on a certain blue hair. Hello Zenovia, did you miss me? Said Griselda as she approached Zenovia who although she reacted when she saw her in the place, she did not take it seriously, just keeping her gaze down. Oh, hello. How long, Sister Griselda? 
Zenovia, aren't you happy to see me? Said Griselda, smiling slightly and taking the blue-haired woman by the cheeks, seeing that she didn't have a cheerful face or anything. Hey? Ah, yes. It doesn't matter, and I'm sorry I didn't answer your calls. Past. Zenovia just looked away, not even wanting to look Griselda in the eyes who seemed worried, she had never seen her like that. Azazel put it on Griselda's shoulder, and she stopped by to see him. A lot happened, so. Sigh dot, you could say that for now they are not in the best of spirits. What happened? We'll talk about it later. Azazel said, closing the subject of the mood of the young people, since they are here for other reasons. That said, that's how the presentation would end, and now they just had to wait for their vampire guests to arrive. The night gets even darker, and outside it is completely silent. Everyone felt something abnormally cold from outside the moment they all exchanged a few words. Everyone felt it and looked out the window, looking in the direction where the entrance to the old school building is located. Azazel stands up. Looks like they're already here. The presence of the vampires is always cold. Kiba, go and invite them in. The blonde only nodded to what the fallen one said and then left the room after bowing. According to many of the things that are said about vampires, vampires are beings who cannot enter a building that they have not been invited to enter. They don't appear in mirrors and they don't have a shadow. They can't get through water, they hate garlic, and they're weak against symbols of the church, such as the cross and holy water. And they can't be restored unless they sleep in their coffin. However, Gasper, who is half vampire, is different than that description. It has shadow and reflection in the mirror. He can get through water and is overcoming his aversion to garlic. And you don't need to sleep in your coffin. Apparently, it's because the human blood in Gasper is stronger. That's why it can sleep inside its box. All the members of Grimory and Citri stood up and lined up next to their respective king to welcome the guests. Irina is also standing behind the nun Griselda, who is still seated. Akeno is on standby from her personal cart so she can serve you at any time. Azazel is basically the only one sitting casually. And Gasper is. Showing a very complicated expression. Of course. Since the real vampires who were chasing him are coming this way. It seems that the vampires coming here aren't from Gasper's family, but he still can't hide the fact that he's nervous. After a while, there is a knock on the door. I've brought the guests. Kiba opens the door and invites the guests to come in in a gentlemanly way. The person who enters is a little girl who looks like a doll and who wears a dress like the one worn by princesses in the Middle Ages. Her eyes, nose, and even her mouth look like they were taken from those western dolls that don't look human, and her beauty looks like it was made by someone. It can be said that it emanates a very mysterious atmosphere. She has long, wavy blonde hair, which makes her look even more like a doll. And the color of his face is so pale that it looks like a corpse. Unlike Gasper, who is pale because he never comes out and is always hidden, she has a skin color that doesn't seem alive. His red eyes are darker than Gasper's. And then, some open their eyes in surprise to see that, indeed. That little girl has no shadow, proving that she is a real vampire. And behind the girl, wearing elegant suits, is a man and a woman. Which some assumed must be his bodyguards or bodyguards. They're both very pale, so they must be vampires too. Some could feel cold and a piercing presence from them. The guest vampire girl greets Rias politely. How are you, representatives of the three great factions? I am especially honored to meet two younger sisters of the Mass and the governor of the Fallen Angels. This is the vampire who then sat on one of the furniture pieces of the place. My name is Elmenhold Karnstein. Please call me Elman. Karnstein, huh? Azazel said with his hand on his chin. If I am correct, it's one of the vampire houses that is positioned at the top of the Carmilla faction. It's been a long time since I've met a pure-blooded noble vampire. That said, Akeno in the best mood she could muster for tonight, poured him a cup of tea which he gladly accepted. Azazel would give Ria's a gentle nudge to reconsider and focus on what they have now. The Redeed no longer had any mood or encouragement for these things that, according to her, are now a waste of time. But still, he has to do his duty as the leader of this territory. The Omenhold, I'm sorry to have to ask you this from the beginning, but. Can you tell us the reason why you wanted us to meet? What is the reason why the Carmilla faction, who have avoided contact with us, suddenly contact the Gremories, Citri, and Governor Azazel? Omenhold closes her eyes and slowly nodding her head, she says Dodd I want to borrow Gaspar Vladi. At that, everyone was speechless at the answer they did not expect and at which they could be surprised. Everyone's eyes then focused on Gaspar, who was trembling from head to toe. It seems that he didn't expect to be addressed, as did the others who didn't expect that. And then, it came to some people's minds that the moment is that Gasper used that strange power that defeated the hero faction weeks ago. A direct answer to a direct question. I'm sorry, but I'll ask you to explain to us in parts. What happened in the world of vampires? Azazel asked with some disdain. A certain incident happened in our vampire world, which caused our values to crumble. 
You may already know this because the information has been revealed, but a half-blood possessing a long inus appeared on the side of the teeps. Azazel asks, closing his eyes, and what is the long inus that owns the side of the teeps? It's the Sephiroth Grail. At the moment when Elmenhold's answer was heard, Azazel put on a more serious expression than usual. Of all things, it had to be one of the relics, the Holy Grail, huh? The one that was used at the Last Supper, the one that received the blood of Jesus. The Holy Grail has many legends. But if it's a sacred gear, then it's not a regular Holy Grail. It's a long inus and it's a masterpiece that can upend the foundation of life. But, Elmenhold, what are immortal vampires looking for when using that? A body that will never die. Even if they receive a stake in their hearts, even if they have a blessed cross in front of them, even if they don't sleep in their coffins, even if they walk in the sun, the people on the teep side have gained a body that cannot be destroyed. No, to put it more precisely, they have obtained a body that is very difficult to destroy. It seems that the power of the Holy Grail is still incomplete. Elmenhold would take another sip from her cup and then continue. They are trying to become beings without weaknesses. They have abandoned their pride as vampires. Not only that, but they are attacking our side. There have already been casualties. We will not forgive these actions. We are planning to execute them as vampire comrades. Elmenhold's iris is dark and full of hatred. So the Carmilla side doesn't like the way the Teeps behave, rejecting the vampire's way of life and initiating an attack. Well, anyone would get angry if they were attacked. Elmenhold nods to Azazel's words. Yes, that's exactly right. And to stop the side of the Teeps that are causing this mess, we want to borrow the power of Gaspar Vladi, who is standing there. Just hearing those words, the atmosphere became a little dense. Some didn't like the idea that they're dragging Gaspar into their vampire war. Even Riaz trembled slightly from the inner rage he contained, he had enough of his say being taken away from him, and now this vampire comes, wanting to take Gaspar, he doesn't even allow it. But you have to calm down, you have to keep the image. Does this have anything to do with Gaspar being a vampire from the house of Vladi, on the side of the teeps? Asked Riaz returning to his well-mannered attitude, but some noticed. The redeed is holding back so as not to show her rage. Elmenhold smiled sympathetically at Ria's question. That's part of the story, too, Ria's Gremory Sama. But what we really want is the power of Gaspar Vladi. We've heard that the power that slept within him has awakened. Just hearing that, some began to wonder where did the vampires hear that Gaspar had unleashed his hidden power. We are planning to resolve the feud between vampires using only the strength of vampires. For that reason, we would like to borrow the power of Gaspar Vladi. Riaz asks, raising his eyebrows, what is that power? Do you know what it is? It was straight to the point, and everyone looked at the vampire. There are rare occasions when one of our race is born with abilities that surpass those of a normal vampire. We've seen this mostly in vampire media of this era. Gaspar Vladi is also going to be one of them. We, who are the Carmillas, don't have enough information to investigate this. But there may be information that may be a clue on the side of the teeps. Some of them began to think about what Elmenhold said. It seems that the vampires consider Gaspar's power to be abnormal. Now, about the Holy Grail which is the problem. Of course the owner is one of those we despise, a half-vampire, but her name is Valerie Teeps. It was born from the House of Teeps. Upon hearing that name, a person responds. It's Gaspar, who has a face that looks like he's about to cry v Valerie. M. Li Valerie wasn't born with a sacred gear like me Gaspar, who has been shaking in fear until now, argues with Elmenhold as soon as he hears the name Valerie, as if she were a different person. Elmenhold replies. Even if it doesn't activate when you're born, sacred gears can be activated with the right stimulus. You should know that, right? Valerie was no exception. We can guess that his powers recently awakened, and he got that ability. Azazel narrows his eyes and folds his arms. We can presume that they hid it before we in heaven could observe and confirm it. Heavens, it's pitiful. For vampires who detest holy power. They didn't abandon the Long Inus relic, the Holy Grail, and didn't even give it to us, but hid it. Elmenhold nodded in agreement with Azazel's statement and went to see Gaspar, who felt a little afraid. Gaspar Vladi, don't you hold a grudge against the house of Vladi, on the side of the teeps who exiled you? With your current power, I think you can take revenge. And I'm satisfied just to be here. Just being able to be here with but you and everyone. As soon as Gaspar hears this, he gradually begins to put on a depressed face. Seeing this, Elmenhold continues. Mixed race, the hated child, the fake. I wonder. What kind of nickname did they call you when you lived in Vladi's house? The only one you could swap emotions with was the other half-vampire from the House of Teeps, Valerie, right? Inside the castle where the House of Teeps imprisoned the half-vampire they had temporarily captured, I was told that you and Valerie worked together and helped each other. Berselda, who had been silent until now, decided to speak up. Your species detests and hates children who are half-blooded, but wasn't it the selfish action of a vampire that originally took a human, used it for his pleasure, and made him father a child? 
the ones who saw our people devoured and had to fight back without remorse were we, the people of the church. If possible, I'd prefer that your species didn't engage with humans as if they were hobbies. Although he says it politely, his words have a lot of hate. He says it while smiling. What to expect from Marina's boss and Zenobia's ex-guardian? Elmenhold puts her hand over her mouth and smiles. I'm sorry about that. But hunting humans is the true nature of our species, vampires. I think demons and angels are the same, don't they? They get a price by granting a wish to a human and giving them something to believe in. Aren't we all abnormal, weak beings who can only live using humans as our source of power? Some, or all, reluctantly had to agree with Elmenhold, since the demons do not do justice. Since there are some who become servants with unreasonable treatment. This vampire girl is completely on the side of abnormal beings. She's pretty sure that humans are resources, so it's not a fair deal, but a one-sided slaughter. And despite it being the first time they have seen each other, all the young people of both clans and others already saw the vampire with bad eyes. She has eyes that look at others that seem to be very discriminatory. I even call Gasper, who is half vampire, a hated child, and a hybrid. In fact, pure vampires are said to have a stronger obsession regarding their lineage and status than demons. To them, the world is a place where there are only two species. Pure vampires and others. Elmenhold said that she then calls the vampire who acts as her bodyguard behind her and pulls out something that looks like a document. I didn't come here empty-handed. I've prepared a document. Elmenhold hands the document to Azazel. Azazel, who receives the document, sighs after looking at it. A peace conference with Carmilla's side, huh? All who were gathered in this place were amazed by the words of the fallen one. So the vampires had an ace up their sleeve to strike up a diplomatic relationship. They don't respond so far, and they're making a move like this right now. Azazel puts the document on the table and asks Elmenhold. Then. This meeting today is for diplomatic reasons and you were sent to us as an emissary, weren't you? Elmenhold smiles at the sensei's question. Yes. Our queen, Madame Carmilla, is saddened by the long war we have had with the great governor of the fallen angels and the church, and says she desires a truce. Azazel only sharpened his gaze at those words. You're doing wrong miss. Normally the peace treaty comes first, and the matter with the Longinus comes after that. This just seems like what you're saying is that there's not going to be a peace deal unless we help you. Griselda, who narrowed her eyes mysteriously, then continues with a calm demeanor. We, the three great factions, who have been asking for and agreeing to peace with each faction without any discrimination, are certainly going to have a weaker persuasion towards the other factions if we do not agree to these terms. They're going to think that even though we ask for peace from each faction, we're going to unleash tension with whomever we choose. And instead of ceasing the war, what we're going to have is a truce. It seems as if they are taking advantage of our weakness. Some of them, when they heard that, thought the vampires were cowards. They came to ask Gasper using negotiation as their shield. And if they didn't agree, not only Ria's, but also Serzich's will lose the trust of others. Ria's has increased his merits by confronting the terrorists with his entourage just like Sona. If they decline this offer, it won't be strange if it affects their stock from now on. Ria's trembles with rage as Sona takes her hand to calm her down. Elmenhold says, raising her mouth as if she is really happy. Please be assured that the fight between vampires will be solved only by vampires. If you lend us Gaspar Vladi, we won't ask you for anything else. We will also prepare a connection with you and the house of Vladi, as well as take part in the truce. Ria's felt his anger want to come out, but he couldn't find the words to know what to say. However. Azazel decided to take the floor. What they're proposing is to make a truce with the vampires, sacrificing one of the servants of the next heiress of the House of Gremory, A. Eh? If I have to sum up what you guys on Carmilla's side are trying to say, it would be that, wouldn't it? It has not been decided that he will be sacrificed. There's nothing better than fixing this immediately. Elmenhold begins to stir them up. You don't want us to interfere, do you? How about acting as a mediator or helping one side? You need Gasper because you lack power, right? Elmenhold shakes her head at the sensei's insinuation and replies. No, we are going to solve our problem with our own hands. If you want to be a counselor, we give you the thumbs up. They do whatever they want. They really are selfish. So these are the thoroughbred vampires. They only care about their own world. And if it's a half vampire, they're going to use it even though it was born on the enemy side. Even if they've chased him, they're still going to use him if he's half vampire. Elmenhold looks around and stands up. That's all I have to say. It was fortunate that I was able to meet you tonight. Most of all, I thank you for kindly allowing a vampire into your territory, Ria's Gremory Sama. Ria's grimaces in disgust at Elmenhold's cold and goodbye. I'm going to leave my servant in this area. If something happens, please consult that person. Now, I'll be waiting for your funny reply. She didn't even back down at Ria's last sarcasm, and the resident of darkness left the old school building. The meeting was over, and about 10 minutes had passed. 
The one who makes a fuss by slamming the table is Zenobia. After all, I don't like vampires, just like always. Zenobia endured the situation well. She was clearly hostile towards them, in addition to the rest. Griselda drinks from her cup and says. If it had been you in the past, you would have sliced them all with Durandal. You held on well. You've probably matured. Hearing the nun praising her, Zenobia showed a complicated expression. Sona, who was the only one able to stay calm, asks Rias what are you going to do? You'll probably have to pay attention to their cooperation. If that happens, you're going to end up sending them to Gaspar Kun. If that happens, in the worst case scenario. You can lose him. Gaspar looked uncomfortable at Sona's clear answer. Of course. He probably didn't think it would be used for diplomatic purposes. But it's a difficult situation to decline. But since they are fostering peace, they may not be able to decline the offer of vampires who are willing to take part in it. Even from the world's perspective, being able to have a truce with half of the vampires with the sole requirement of lending Gasper can prove to be a bargain with great benefits. Gasper takes a deep breath and spits in a trembling voice. V I'm going to go. Let this guy say he's going to go on his own. But his eyes are full of determination. I'm not planning on returning to the vampire world again, because for me, this is my home. She. I am indebted to her. Thanks to her I was able to escape from the castle, and I was able to get here. I've already died once, but in spite of that I have a kind mistress and friends who play with me. I manage to be happy, but to think that she's the only one who continues to suffer is. I'm sure she's being treated unreasonably Gasper armed himself with manhood and told Rias, I want to save Valerie, and I'm not going to die I'm going to save Valerie, and I'll be back. Hearing Gasper's determination, Rias rose to his feet. I'm going to. This time I'm going to plan to sit down and talk to the people of House Vladi. First, I'm going to go there and I'm going to see the situation with my own eyes. I think it won't be too late if Gasper is sent after that. So, so do we. No, I want you and everyone else to wait. Rias interrupted Zenobia's words, shaking his head. They may be needed if something happens. And what do you mean by that? At Zenobia's question, for the precondition, it is appropriate for me, who am Gasper's mistress, to visit them personally, and it will not be disrespectful to the other side. And there's going to be two main reasons why I want you guys to stay on hold here. The first reason is for all of you to take action without me if an incident occurs. There may be some who attack this place, so the members need to be able to handle the situation. The second reason. Rias looks at all his servants. If something were to happen to me there, I'd need reinforcements. Tiba asks. So, but you, you're predicting that something might happen, or possibly you'll be involved in some business there, right? That's right, Yudo. It will be best if nothing happens, but judging by past events, there is a certain chance that we will be involved in something, judging by the problems that vampires have. So it's not uncommon to take steps to anticipate it. Then wouldn't it be better if we all went with you from the beginning? Zenobia asked again, and Rias didn't agree to her question. They'd be on alert if we all went there. And they might think things like we're going to solve it by force, and this way, it's going to be harder to negotiate with them, so it's going to be appropriate for me to go there first. They're the ones who didn't even try to listen to us, so I have to go there. Am I being innocent? Rias apparently, try to get Azazel's approval. No, that's not a bad way to think for the king of a brute force group. But I'd feel uncomfortable if you went there alone. For this incident, it looks like the secrets of both the Teeps and the Carmillas are going to be connected. And the discussion we had earlier left a lot unexplained. Of course I'm going to raise my guard as much as I need to. I plan to take my knight okay with you, Yudo. Yes, please count me in. Biba nodded, agreeing to go. Azazel says as he adjusts his neck loudly. I'm going to go too, then. I'm going to meet the Carmillas first. At least I'm going to make sure I can send several members of the Gremory group to the vampire dispute. I'm planning to bring back several souvenirs. On the other hand, Rias must go to Vladi's house directly. If Rhea shows up on Carmilla's side, they will be put on alert. You but aren't you going to be more cautious if Sensei goes to see you personally? You are an important person for the Fallen Angel's side. It's going to be a lot better than having Heaven, the Church, and the Angels, who are still fighting them. Rather, for me, who knows about Sacred Gears, going there is going to be vital to the negotiation. Even for the guys who came today, the main person they came to talk to is me. Azazel would then stop by to see Nun Griselda, along with Irina. Tell Michael what happened here. The Holy Grail and vampires. It looks very suspicious. Griselda nodded. Yes, I understand. Michael Sama said he was going to send our Joker if anything happened, and I hope we can avoid the worst. Azazel is a little surprised by the words of the nun Griselda. The Joker, huh, can you send him that easy? Rather, the way they deal with us has increased. Well, that's normal, given that quirky guys are after us. Since the Holy Grail is going to be involved, we can ask for help from the Joker. Holy Grail and the vampires. 
normally, it is the sacred and the dark that cannot coexist. More likely, nothing good is going to happen. I want to make sure that there are as few casualties as possible. Yes, that is why it is the intention of the four great seraphim to use the idle man, the joker, as much as possible. Seriously, that guy is always wandering around somewhere when he has time to find delicious dishes and we can never contact him. He's a more troublesome guy than Zenobia here. The aforementioned felt a little hurt and offended by what Griselda said. That said, everything was already decided. The chosen ones would go to the land of the vampires to clear their affairs. How is the confirmation going with the rebel mages? A hooded man spoke at a round table with others. No problem. It looks like they're going to have fun, too. That is why they were exiled from the association. Ahahaha, we are magicians who ally with terrorists, so we are not in a situation where we can say that. Anyway, is our leader really serious about doing this? If that's the will of those in charge, it can't be helped. It's crazy. Shalba and Kao Kao were also crazy, but what we are going through is insane. Everything we always do is insane. We can't back down anymore. Then who are we going to test? Ah, there's no point in trying the Gremory and the Citri if the Sekar Uite isn't with them. Even a child would know this, without the Sekar Uite, these groups and the entire alliance are nothing. You're right, damn it. I want a good opponent. Oh. Unexpected. Said a hooded man with a circle of communication in hand. What happened? The leader called and said the preparations are ready. In addition, he said that they apparently managed to track down the whereabouts of the current Sekar Uite, along with the rest of the team of the current hacker Yuku, Valerie Lucifer. Hulu. Interesting. Yes, that's even better. Ha! Ah, why waste our resources trying to test worthless brats without the Sekar Uite by their side? When we can put both celestial dragons to the test. It is said that dragons make powerful enemies. Then they should just dance with each other. Among dragons, I mean. It looks like something big is going to rise up against both celestial dragons and their allies, which will be the beginning of an event that will change everything. Let me know in the comments below if you guys want the next part. Also check out my other video that has been shown and left. Thank you for watching, if you enjoyed this video please like and share this video. And have a fantastic day bye.